A very warm welcome to Zhuhai in the south of China, a hop, step and a jump away from Hong Kong. We're live from the Zhuhai International Circuit for round two, races three and four of the FAM Asia Road Racing Championships. And that is the final 14th corner, uh, which has uh, already taken one or two uh, casualties in practice and qualification. Des Corkill alongside Barry Russell to talk you through the next couple of days. Barry, uh, it's good to be back in Zhuhai. It's long been part of the calendar at the ARRC. Yep, and the second visit within six months, which is absolutely brilliant. It's starting to feel like home. Yes, the welcome from Zhuhai, the welcome from China has been windy and a little bit rainy as well. So there's a little bit of jeopardy for the racers. This is the circuit. It's very right-hand corner-ish. Ten of the corners are right-hander, Barry. Yeah, but it does flow quite nicely in places. There's some hard braking, overtaking spots at turn one, seven, eleven. And uh, as we will see, one or two more. Certainly are. OK, there are five races taking place today, another five tomorrow in five different race categories. As usual, we get things underway with the TVS One Make competition, where Hiroki Ono is the man to beat. The uh, number two isn't the defending champion because he joined late last season, but since he's joined this circuit and every race this season, two so far this season, Hiroki Ono, by Russell, has been unbeatable. Nobody seems to be finding an answer to him, and uh, he's got this what must be to his, uh, to his competitors an annoying habit of just hanging back in every single session and then coming through uh, with a humiliating final lap to uh, go to the top. So uh, it's been done again. He started ten times so far. He's won nine races, one DNF. Uh, that includes eight wins on the bounce. And here he is on pole position once again, number two to the extreme right of your picture in the yellow helmet. He's only one thousandth of a second quicker though than Randam Rosley, who is set a second on the grid after qualification. So maybe, maybe there's a slight chink in the armour of Hiroki Ono because he also lost in Japan for the first time in a long time last week. Yes, he did. That's right. And uh, I, th I thought, during, although he ended up a thousandth quicker than Ramdan this morning, it looked to me through a lot of that session that Ramdan had a little bit more pace. So if you have to pick any one rider to upset Hiroki's rhythm, it is going to be that number four on your screen there, Ramdan Rosley. Yeah, there is a Ramdan Rosley. They themselves, they were all a second plus quicker than Muzuki Mohammed, the defending champion, and Sartak Chavan, the uh, exciting young Indian. I can tell you we do have an absentee from the grid this morning, uh, Irv, um, Irvin Aksam. His bike was damaged this morning. He will not be racing. But here is the grid. Hiroki Ono uh, in P1 alongside Ramdan Rosli. Very little to choose between them. Defending champion Muzke Mohammed from Malaysia in P3. And on row two, we've got the prodigy from India, Sartak Shivan, who's been lighting up the series, as has, to be fair, Rishi Takahira, the young Japanese rider who's starting fifth, sixth, Chirant Vishwanath, who's looked strong all the way through this weekend. We move down to the third row where Vorapang Malawan, the original champion of this TVS One Made competition a couple of years ago, he's in P7. Ate Kanga, a young Thai, is in P8. He came off this morning. KY Ahmed from India is in P9. All riding identical, TVS Apache RR310. And leading row four is the German Rocco Sessler next to him. Deki Tiano Aldi, Deki had a heavy crash yesterday, hopefully he'll be okay. And outside of him, Kim Ming Jae, who's also been down the road a couple of times. And on the final row of the grid, Irvin, who I'm told is not starting, we'll have a little look there. And you've got a local wildcard, Su Hao Jang, uh, starting in P14, bike number 16. And Casey Klammer from the Philippines will be hoping to improve on his first weekend for Casey. He, had, uh, he accumulated nine points, so he had a P10. Uh, he'll hope, be hoping to get maybe into the top eight. Yeah, Su Hai Zhang is a 16-year-old middle schooler who has flown in from Shanghai to compete in this race. He's being supported by Jimmy Racing Team, who are really getting amongst it on the Chinese uh, motorcycle racing scene. Yeah, we've got one or two wild cards in the other races coming from that Jimmy Racing Team. We'll keep a, a close eye on them as the safety car follows. We had a little bit of rain earlier on today, and, and yesterday there was a, a couple of crashes on that 14th corner where it was feared oil had been spilled, so they put sawdust on the, on the surface. In the end, it wasn't oil, it was just water, and the sawdust exacerbated the slip. So, all cleared up today, though. Track looking in tip-top condition. 
But the rain clouds are hanging above us, Barry Russell. Yeah, yeah they are indeed. I think we can uh, be prepared for, we should be prepared for changeable weather this afternoon. And uh, as he often does, last minute Hiroki Ono is hanging around at the back of that warm up lap and is going to trundle up. The man with the red flag is waiting for him. Zhuhai International Circuit, the venue, as you said, we were here in November for the penultimate round of last year. This time it's the second round, and he does take his time. His own three ways, a lot quicker on the track itself, it should be said, Hiroki Ono. One yep. or two glances towards his way. Harry yep. Epson. Mind games from the Japanese rider. This is an eight-lap race. Red lights are out and we are underway. Oh no, with his usual tidy start coming in. Over from the far side though, Ramdan Rosli has made an excellent start and he and Musike Mohammed are threatening Hiroki Ono at the front, but Ono takes a right line, cuts inside Ramdan Rosli. Although Ramdan, a little switch back on him and that's good work from Ramdan Rosli. He means business today. Yeah, he got away well and he held that line into turn one and crucially into the opening sector. Ram down in front, but is Hiroki going to try and go early? Well, we have seen Hiroki Ono take big leads in this competition and hold it. We also seen him just hold his powder dry and wait until the last couple of laps or so. But Ramdan is a very, very experienced racer, as is Muzake Mohammed. He is the defending champion. It was great to see Muzake win the title last year. And those three are clinging on. Richie Takahira trying his best to stay close as well. And an early casualty out there. That's Sartak. Oh dear. Sartak, two podiums in Bury Ram, and he's already out on the first lap of round two. Sartak Chaban started off in P4. Up out of the reckoning. Unless there's a, a remarkable comeback or rain comes and really affects the pace for Sartak, that is a, a very, very disappointing first lap. lap. Hiroki leads from Randan Rosli. Yeah, now if anybody can uh, stay with Hiroki Ono, based on the form we've seen this weekend, it will be Ramdan. Wizakir has been there or thereabouts as well. Perhaps these two experienced Malaysian riders can work together to stop the Japanese eight times race winner in a, in a row from uh, escaping again. Rocco Sessler, sorry, Barry. Rocco Sessler's got him up into P6. I think we're expecting a, a bit from Rocco Sessler. And also up there, but there is Voropong. Bike number three, but trailing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for Voropong Marwan. Yep, he clearly didn't get away well. And uh, also in that group lagging behind is uh, another Thai rider who has been quite impressive this weekend. That's Atir Kanger. So the number 11, one to watch out for in case he can start to catch up with this group. So can these three get away? I think the answer is they already are. have got away, Barry. Yeah, K.Y. Ahmed is trying to cling on. Uchitaka here is the, the closest to them. The differential is a, a full second back between this front three and Richie Takahira. And he's a little bit isolated as well. So we see this mix of experienced riders and young guns in the TVS Asia One Mate Championship. It is the old hands who are leading currently. Oh no, vastly experienced. Uh, a champion on the ARC 10 years ago as a junior coming through. In the meantime, Voropong is still holding on to Ati, the two ties. Now you're talking uh, youth and experience all together. But the front three, Hiroki leads the way. Muzike takes a, a slightly different angle in, tries to just go through on the inside. This is uh, one of the 10 right handers on this circuit. Yeah, if those three do start to tussle, that could allow KW Ahmed to get in touch. This is the final corner, 14th corner, and Hiroki Ono, as he did through lap one, leads through lap two. But Randon Rosley in very, very close attendance. In fact, taking a, a little bit of time off Hiroki Ono, as is Muzake Mohammed. Yeah, looking at the line and corner speed through that crucial turn 14, there's nothing to choose between those three. A little bit further down, we'll keep going back to Voropong Walawan. See how he is able to cope. He's in P7 at the moment, ahead of KY Ahmed. 
He was uh, by far and away the best racer in uh, the first season. He came under pressure and lost the title last year. And has been uh, almost the mentor of this series for TVS One Make. We keep a, a close eye on him, close by him. We've got uh, Rocco, Rocco Sessler, the young German. Yeah, real culture shock for the 15-year-old German who's, uh, who hasn't got that German flag on the front of his helmet anymore, the number 15. P9 and it did not finish for Sessler last time out. Right then, Takahira has got himself up onto that front three. A little bit of a wobble from Takahira. And behind them, eight is uh, Vishwanath. Yeah, they're all lapping in the mid-148s, uh, that front four, now, now front four. So good work from Takahira to get on terms. Sartak Chavan, who went off uh, in the first lap, he is back on the circuit and he's still racing, but he's a long, long way down. He's a minute down on everybody. In the meantime, three has now become four. And Muzakir, the number one, the defending champion, who took the lead at the end of this first straight. He's back in P4 at the moment as Ono goes through, and that is interesting to see what kind of a tow you're getting. There could be enough time on this straight, on these TBS One Makes Barry, to actually take a tow and take the lead on the final straight. Yeah, that's right, and you saw there the uh, impudent young Japanese rider goes on the inside of the master, going into turn one there. That is a crucial overtaking point, because it's a lot more difficult to overtake through this first sector. Kiona reasserted himself. Nice little battle behind that currently four, just about to be five. Certainly something looks to have happened to uh, Vishwanath. The um, bike number eight was just behind this front four. Yeah, showing as fifth on the timing screen. But he's, uh, he's an absentee there. So this is the front four, my goodness, look at the gap back to, uh, to Rocco. He's got Ate Kange up behind him. There is no Vishwanath. Oh, that's a problem for Mazake Mohammed. He just rescued it. Yep. He held on to it well, but that's cost him. And <laughs> then, he, then he overcompensates going wide. Yeah, let's just take a, a look here. Yeah, the back steps out, tries to spit him off. He holds on to it. That's a good save from Muzakir, the defending champion. With the distraction, Hiroki Ono has taken the lead. Takahira looking to make it a Japanese 1-2. And look at that, Ono has really taken advantage of, of that little moment. I am wondering what's happened to Vishwanath. Because he was clearly in P4, but there is no bike number eight anywhere to be seen. Unless he was sucked right back into that pack. So Musake Mohammed is there. Yeah, there is Vishwanath. So he must have made a mistake because the group behind him have caught right up with him. He was uh, a second down and a second clear of the rest of the pack, but clearly made a mistake. And now we've got two groups. Yeah, and he's just uh, moved to the front of that group once again. So answer the question. Where is Vish where is uh, Chirant Vishwanath? There is the battle for P5 at the Zhuhai International Circuit in the south of China. Round two of the ARRC Asian Road Racing Championship. This is the TBS Asia One Make Championship, third season of it. As we have a look there at Sartak, Sartak is close to being lapped, so the number nine could become a distraction. To be fair, the, the riders are normally very good and get out of the racing line. Yeah, and that, uh, that near high side for Muzakir. Cost him about two seconds. Uh, Sartak lets everybody just go past and a little slap from himself. He knows that uh, this is a, a wasted opportunity. Two podiums for Sartak in race number one. And he'll get a minimum number of points here. So the Indian flag is being uh, raised by Chiranth Vishwanath and he's not had things exactly going his own way. Yeah, if he can keep going, he will pick up a point or two. Vishwanath leading the way. Also in there, KY Ahmed. 
So a, a big Indian sandwich. But up the lead, Randan Rosley goes forward. And Takahira is there as well. This is a good little battle. Muzak here. You make one mistake and you are out of the reckoning. Sartak, he is out of the reckoning already. Again, he just gets out of the way, takes a wide line. He is being lapped by all of these racers, Sartak. So he's just racing to make sure he picks up some points, which might help him in the overall championship later on. Yep, and there is number 10, Takahiro, we were just taking a look at. But Chirant doing a really good job at the front of this second group. Did a good job yesterday too, and in qualifying. He just must have made a, a horrible mistake because he did have a, a rather healthy lead of, of this group a couple of laps ago. And now he's in a, a definite race. It includes Rocco, it includes Ate Kangia, it includes Boropong and KY Ahmad. Yeah, Muzakir also in reverse. He lost another two seconds on that lap. So perhaps something amiss with that TVS Apache. Oh no, still leads. We're into the second half of the race. We are approaching the three-quarter mark. Oh no, as expected with Ramdan Rosley, they were so close, barely a thousandth of a second separated them in qualifying. Yeah, they were circulating together as well, so it's quite interesting to, to watch. And Ramdan's pace was good throughout the qualifying session. Uh, we didn't see Hiroki's pace because he trundled around until the final lap to get his time. See again. But if anything, Arocchiano is holding up Ramdan Rosley. Looking for a ninth straight win, the man in the number two. He had a double here in Juhai in November. And he's riding well, but Ramdan Rosley, to his credit, I've liked Ramdan. He's Ridden up to the, the 600s. We've had him in the, the, the underbone category. Very versatile racer, as they all are, of course, but he's adapted well here, Ramdan Rosley. And also adapting very nicely is the number 10, Richie uh, Takahara, who had a, a P7 and a did not finish in round one in Buriram. Yeah, so, I mean, looking at that, Des, you can see that uh, Ramdan's pushing Hiroki Ono really hard. The question is whether Hiroki Ono is holding anything in reserve for the final lap, whether he is just letting Ramdan think that he's in contention. Under the grandstand at uh, turn six for the penultimate time. Takahira, best time of uh, 147.6, that's the fastest lap so far. In the meantime, let me just take a look there at Ate Kange, a part of that uh, little quintet chasing P5. Yeah, Azakir marooned in P4, and Voropong now, or well, Ate Kange has just gone past his uh, senior Thai compatriot. Vishwanath has dropped down once again, bike number eight. And KY Ahmad is closing in on Vishwanath as well, and Rocco. Uh, who I think we were expecting great things from, possibly just because he's a German coming into the into the category. But now we come into the final lap. This is the battle for P5 that we are just sticking with at the moment. Ate Kangar ahead of them, four seconds, actually 13 seconds clear of them, are the front three. We'll rejoin them, but this battle for P5, Vorapong Malawan just deciding, OK, time to show a little bit of seniority here. Goes in ahead of Ate Kanga, up at the front. This is the going to be the battle for one, two, three. Looking for nine in a row, bike number two, Hiroki Ono. Is there a way that Ramdan can get past him? Oh, Barry? and there's three bikes down then. Chirant is one of them, the number eight. That's Rocco Sessler with the black helmet. Tall figure there. KY Ahmad, I think, may well have been the third. Bike number six, yeah, KY Ahmad. And he's, he's hurting a little bit, KY Ahmad. Back to the front. And Ramdan Rosley has a look on the inside. Time is running out. You've got this left-hander and then they come into the home straight. Yeah, around turn 10 now. Into the Indian oil sign. And Ono looks for win number and, nine, and Ramdan. 
Yeah, look at Ramdan trying to get up inside. This is a tight double right-hander, 11 and 12, merge into one. But Hiroki Ono looks as though he's done just enough, but Ramdan hasn't finished yet. He's right on his tail. It's Final cool. corner, Ramdan Rosley tries to just go on the inside of Hiroki Ono. Ono, though, takes the perfect line, and he is unstoppable in this category. It's win number nine in a row, win number three of the season for Hiroki Ono, ahead of Ramdan Rosley, and coming through in third place, Richie Takahara. Yeah, good performance there by Rishi as Voropong, I think, wins that battle for P5. Just ahead of Atia, and then there were the three riders, Vishwanath, Rocco and KY Ahmad, who all dropped out. That might mean that uh, Deki has got a chance to come through into P6. Yeah, Deki a long way down, but he did take one hell of a thumping yesterday in a, in a crash. It's the salute from Hiroki Ono. That is win number 10 in the TVS Asia one mate category and the ninth in a row. But he really was kept honest there by Ramdan Rosley, who just couldn't quite put himself in front of the Japanese. Still hasn't quite found the key. Good performance for Richie Takahira coming in in P3. That's his first podium. In this competition, Ramdan Rosley picking up his second P2 of the season. And he'll move into second place in the overall championship standings because Sartak may well only pick a couple of points. Well, actually, if he can get ahead of um, Rocco and KY Ahmad, he may pick up more than that. But oh no, it's another celebration. And how do you stop him, Ferry Russell? Well, Ramdan tried mightily to stop him. He couldn't quite do it. And you'd felt that Hiroki Ono was just about in control all the time. But he was run very close as he was in qualifying. Fastest lap there went to Rishi Takahira. 147.67. So lots to uh, look at there. Confirmation, Hiroki Ono takes this eight lap race his third successful performance this season, ahead of Ramdan Rosley, P2 for him, Richie Takahira, first podium of the season for him, Musake Mohammed, the defending champion, held on for 13 points in P4, Voropong Malawan ahead of his um, compatriot, Ate Kango for P5, Deki Tiano Aldi in seven, and Vishwanath got up after that crash to finish 40 seconds down in P8. So a second P8 for him. Kim Min Jae from Korea in P9. And Casey Klammer, uh, we said he'd be looking for a top 10. He's got a top 10 place ahead of Su Hao Jang, the youngster. Uh, Rocco Sessler got up from his crash to finish in P12, as did KY Ahmad in 13, ahead of his compatriot Zartak. And a non-starter was Irvan Exum, who had a, a problem with his bike. We hope he's able to start tomorrow. Yeah, big disappointment for Sartak. His race was done on the very first lap. So he didn't, wasn't able to follow up his brilliance in round one, in Bury Ram. Weather looking a bit clearer now, Des. It is, it is, but um, the clouds are still circling a little bit and rain is forecast later on today. But we'll worry about the rain if and when it comes. Well, everybody's ready for it if it does come. We've had practice in all conditions, so the teams have got data if it does rain, if and when it does rain. Just waiting for the riders to make it back into the park, Fermi. Where we'll get some reaction to Hiroki Ono. But he is making this a, a one-man championship, Hiroki. OK, let's quickly just go for a quick recap of what we've just witnessed. First race of the weekend, third race of the season. Hiroki Ono bike number two in the yellow over on the far side was on the pole position. Didn't get off to the best start, but then takes the right angle into the first corner by Russell. And while the rest weren't chasing him from then on in, 
Uh, he, he actually set his mark out very, very early. Yeah, it was Randan that got away the fastest. And you have to say, he did everything right except win Randan Rosley. Because it was a beautiful start, but he couldn't stop Hiroki Ono from getting in front of him uh, right at the beginning there. But it was a four way battle. Rishi Tak Takahira caught up the front three, which initially was Hiroki Ono, Muzakia, and Ramdan. And the battle behind them went through all kinds of mutations. Vishwanath, bike number eight, and KY Ahmad from India were in that group. But they would uh, come a little bit of a cropper later on. By this time, Muzaki Mohammed's had a, a little moment. He's dropped quite a long way down. And Sartak behind them, well, he went out in the in the first lap. So he's being uh, lapped by everybody. Borupang Malawan would eventually win this uh, battle for P5, the bike number three. And ahead of uh, Atir Kangar, his uh, young uh, compatriot. But there were moments throughout this race. Yeah, there were. And that, that was one where uh, Atir got ahead of Borupang. But back at the front on the final lap, there was, we'll probably see in a moment, a crash taking out three of those riders in the battle for P4. There they go. KY Ahmad, Rocco Sessler, two of those going out. Oh no, though, he avoids all distractions. Ramdan Rosli, you're quite right. He is doing everything he possibly can to stay right on the tail. Has a look, but the line through that final corner by Hiroki Ono, absolutely perfect. And he goes away for win number nine in succession, win number three of this season. Hiroki Ono from Japan, runaway leader of this championship. Hats off to Hiroki. Okay, there's a little bit of wind blowing up. The clouds, I keep looking anxiously out. The clouds are high, it's bright at the moment. But the rain is forecast later on. And I keep uh, mentioning that simply because we've got four more races coming up this afternoon. We've got the Underbone 150, the 250s, 600s, and then onto the 1000s. Right then, here is the podium. Richie Takahira takes his first podium your race of from Japan, Hiroki Ono. The, um, the season, Ramdan Rosley in P2, but Ono, familiar position in P1. Yep, he owns that top spot on the, the box. Anthem of Japan. And now to present the third prize award, we would like to invite Mr. Chao Chan, Chao Chi Wat, technical consultant of TVS Racing, up onto the podium. Chao Chan, Chao Chi Wat, technical consultant of TVS. In third place. Rob Runs Japan. on to hand out the prize for third place. Okay. Sivanessa, another technical consultant from TVS Racing. He hands out the second prize. And, and Kartikayan Vasudevan, chief technician, TVS Racing, will hand out uh, another first prize to Hiroki Ono. Nice to see TVS spreading the love in Getting uh, consultants involved in the prize giving ceremonies. Kartikan's a little bit too tall though for <laughs> these, isn't he? As he stands in front of Hiroki Ono. <laughs> yes, you're right, Des. Tiptoes Hiroki. <laughs> yeah. I, I, one of the technical consultants is from Thailand, I noticed. Chao Chan.
So you've got the photographers having their moment. And this is where the championship standing says, and very early on in the season, Hiroki Ono leading by 75 points, 24 clear of Ramdan Rosley. Sartak did pick up a couple of points, but he's been um, drawn level by Muzake Mohammed on 40. Atia Kanda, this is a good uh, debut season for Atia. 33 points for him ahead of Deki Tiano Aldi, who I think we're expecting more of. Boropong Malawan, well, the master is being shown one or two lessons. He's on 28 points. And Richie Takahira, after that first podium, is on 25 points, 50 points behind the championship leader, Ono. I hope we'll get some reaction from Hiroki Ono. And I think we can go down to our um, pit side reporter, and that is uh, Daniel Bogus. Apologies, a little bit premature. The winners are still celebrating. We'll just go for a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we'll get some reactions to that TBS One make, as well as the Underbone 150cc Championship. You're watching the Asian Road Racing Championship. We are coming to you from Zhuhai in the south of China. We'll be back with you for the Underbone 150 in a couple of minutes' time. Idemitsu engine oils are precisely formulated for meticulously engineered Japanese. Idemitsu engine oils are precisely formulated for meticulously engineered Japanese car engines. We are committed to delivering optimal performance. We fulfill this commitment through five ultra-protective benefits known as Quintet Guard. They unleash the peak performance of treasured cars. Drive anywhere with confidence. Feel the excitement in your heart. The highest quality engine oils in the history of Idemitsu. Underway with the first race of the Underbone 150cc season. Aditya Fauzi off to a really, really slow start. Faraz Putra was just swamped as they went up the little brow of the hill on that. And Murugo Vittoni also on there. We're on board. And right behind us, the familiar number 50. He was a little bit further up the order earlier on. And now look who's uh, into the breaking zone for turn 12. Bajwal Sham moving up through as well. And look who's just 2 2 2. It's Farmi Bassam, one of the the new breed, the next generation, as they get ready in position for turn 12. Oh, look at that, on the grass, everybody is battling for it. Why, Aji Chilaxana tries to get on the inside. Oh. There is contact, three go down, but in the meantime, two, two, two. Farmi Bassam comes to take the victory. Farmi Bassam, for the first time atop the podium, really impressed with how he negotiated in the final couple of laps. Race two of the season of the Underbone 150cc at the Asian Road Racing Championships at the Chang International Circuit. A good start. Uh, Fares on board with him. 
As always with Underborn, Barry Russell, this would be Padrell scamper away at the start. Absolutely no chance of him making a getaway. Amadafi Framran's team, the pit spike team, they were always there as Masato Fernando. Most times they were in a podium position when you came over the finish line at the end of a lap, like they were rehearsed for decent weekend. Both riders showed plenty of speed. I do think Aditya Fauzi is a good foil. But Amadafi Framran, bike number 50, takes a great line, cuts the corner. Situation. Of course, there's chaos going on behind him. But Ahmed Afi Framran goes on to secure his first win for his new team. Ahmed Afi Framran will be there or thereabouts as well. Picked up three points yesterday, 25 today. Yes, uh, warm welcome to the Zhuhai International Circuit. Some highlights there of what happened in round one of the season at the um, Buriram Circuit. And uh, Barry Russell, <laughs> it was chaos on corner number 12. You forget the chaos, um, but uh, it, it, it's, it's always there in Underbone. We were both here ooing and ahhing as though we'd never seen it before. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. That's what you expect. However, it's a new race, it's a new round, new opportunities. And in Super Bowl earlier on today, we had the top 10 racers um, trying to get themselves onto pole. And the top 10, John Emerson and Guito led us off, but uh, leading the line early on was uh, Giancarlo Maurizio for Uma Racing. And Filipinos, well, they, they do well in underbone. Yeah, they do, and increasingly so. Uh, Giancarlo Maurizio was the first away by virtue of being the 10th best qualifier in the earlier session. He would set himself up in a P5 eventually. Yeah, that was a decent performance from Giancarlo. Next up was Fares Putra. Interestingly, in the top 10, neither of the athletes who won on race round one were in the top 10 in the underbone. That just shows you how competitive it really is. Aditya Fauzi coming through. Uh, like 177 came through Aditya to pick up a P3, a time of 202, 378. If you're getting anywhere close to 202, you're pretty quick on underbone around the circuit. Yeah, that's right. And uh, always quick, it seems now. Mirabil Vitoni, the 157 for LFNH Putra. Even now in the middle of the session. But this is the man who loves this circuit, Akid Aziz for the Pittsbike one-way JRT Tech 2 racing team. He's got wins in two previous appearances here at Zhuhai. And it's amazing how one rider must just seem to love a circuit, seems to know everything about it. Yep, he was, especially in his pomp last time we were, we were here and looked like taking a double win until uh, he had a mechanical. This is the circuit that we have. It's very right-handed, but as you say, it's pretty balanced as well. The two loops. That's to turn six and seven and nine and ten, and then eleven and twelve. They make it really very interesting. Yeah, some kinks as well to make things interesting. And let's uh, get some real interest uh, down from the grid, where Daniel Bogers has got a couple of interviews for us. Thank you, Des. Well, as you can see, the weather has really shown up. It's Thank what you, we expected was rain, but is properly hot. But with a light breeze, nevertheless, let's go back to the grid right now and we're gonna talk to Akit. So Akit, in round one you had a DNF and a P4, but last year here you won the race in a spectacular fashion. How do you feel about this race now starting from pole? Okay, kalau untuk performance kita makin improve. Uh, bagi saya memang kita banyak improve untuk round ni. Sebab round sebelum ni kita masih mencari setup lah. So, untuk round ni dan untuk next round, saya rasa semuanya hampir ready untuk bersaing. Thank you so much, Aki. Good luck. So, the translation there was, they was looking for setups all throughout yesterday and uh, they're ready for the race now, starting from pole. So, we're going to head over down the front row and we're going to talk to a guy who's been a star in this category right now, Aditya Fazi. So, Aditya, a really strong performance this weekend. What is your strategy with Wagyu Aji for this race? Uh, uh Untuk race hari, kali ini race satu mencoba lebih tenang uh, belajar dari pengalaman. Thank you so much, Aditya. Good luck. So, <laughs> so basically, Aditya was saying that he's gonna be calm about it. And he's gonna try and be tactical about the race and hopefully to win. So now we're gonna finally cap it off with uh, Giancarlo. So, hi Giancarlo. Um, 
right now we have four Filipino riders on the grid, and it's quite a quite a show. So, how do you feel about this race now with uh, with three fellow compatriots? So right now uh, I feel pressure because this this was my first time to race in the front, and hopefully uh, this race will turns to be uh, safely and hopefully to get a podium today. That was going to be my follow-up question. You've been looking good this weekend, so how do you feel uh, this has been uh, so far for you? Okay. Like, uh, you've been looking good this weekend, so how, how has Zuhai been for you? I don't know. Uh, so far, uh, and with, throughout the sessions, we've seen good performances from you, so how, does, how has Zuhai been for you so far? So, sorry, essentially, I'm asking uh, what, how, Zuhai, Zuhai has been good for Jan so far. How, how does he feel about it, uh, the track and such? Uh, yeah. So, this track uh, is uh, more technical than the Thailand. So, I expected uh, this race will be more challenging. And hopefully, uh, I can win this race today. Thank you so much for the insight. Good luck for this race. Back to you, Desen Barry. Well done, um, Bahasa translation, Indonesia Bahasa translation. No Tagalog though from, <laughs> from Daniel. And the wind was blowing there as well. Yeah, I thought they were going to lose one of the crew then. Yeah. going to disappear Mary Poppins style into the clouds. Really fascinated by the, the temperature changes and the wind changes and the, the, the weather. The rain is promised later on today, so it's uh, really challenging for the, for the riders themselves. And Giancarlo is saying it's a challenge himself because it's his first time at Zhuhai. There's a lot going through the minds of these young fellas. Yeah, there is. And the, uh, and, and the giggle that you heard from Aditya Fauzi, I think it was because uh, in the, under the pressure of sitting on the front row of the grid, he's been trying to speak English, and I think he just couldn't bring it to himself at the time, and that's why he laughed at the end, kind of laughing at himself, I think. Terrific, though. Yeah, uh, well done, graced. Daniel, down there. And uh, you, you saw, as you, as you were chatting there, cloudy weather, 29 degrees, but it's changeable. And you saw the gusts of winds, which uh, there are a couple of open parts of this circuit as well. And particularly in the underbones, the lightest, um, this could be an awful lot of fun. And that final corner, you just see the safety car coming around there as well. You can anticipate nine or ten going around that at the same time on the last corner. You're right, Des. It's uh, it's a really challenging one. It's a much faster corner than, well, obviously turn 12 at Bury Ram, but also turn uh, 13, final turn at uh, Sepang as well. So different challenge. Mirabel Vitoni, rider that I've marked as a potential champion this season. There's Ferris Putra for Cardinals Racing. Four tenths quicker, um, Aki Daziz was. As we're on board, as you say, Faraz Putra, a 202-378 for Faraz Putra. Then you've got Giancarlo Mauricio, who we had to speak to alongside him. The defending champion, Nazrul Izabahudin, who quietly has put himself at the top of the championship standings with a P5 and a P2 in round one. That's right. He's uh, there or thereabouts. He came through late in the Super Bowl session to secure uh, fifth place. Spectacular performance from Nazrul Izzat in the middle of last year where it uh, propelled him to the championship. He, was, he went five races in the top two, which in the helter-skelter world of underbone is remarkable. Here's another quick rider, Des. Dimas Juliat Moko riding for Team One for All this year, which I think will do him some good because they've got such a strong uh, management there. Felix Pujamulia, 203-401. Alongside him, then Wayu Adjutrilaksana, a former champion, easy to pick out in the lime green and black with the white helmet. Second and sixth, so Wayu Adji second in the championship standings. 30 seconds as all the cameras are taken off. And I mentioned before, the two winners of the first two races, not in the top 10. Fahmi Bassam down in P12, Ahmed Afif Amran down in P14 doesn't mean that much in underbone but it is just a, maybe an indicator of how competitive this field is yeah it is there were some surprises Fajrul Sham down at the back as well this will be a short six lap of the circuit this is the formation lap in the chairman of the bike 157 will be keeping a close eye on him that's the pit spike team always confident 
Well, she in the formation lap looks hectic, doesn't it? It <laughs> does, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is just the warm up, <laughs> uh, warm up lap, people. <laughs> As they go out into the countryside at Zhu Hai, circuit looks in, in really good nick, and it's a, it's a nice challenge. And uh, let's run through the grid. Uh, Akid Aziz. A two-time winner here will be on pole for Pitts Bike One Way JRT Tech alongside Moro Vitoni for Yamaha LFN and Aditya Fauzi for Race Tech 60 Racing Team on the front row. And on row two, we've got Faris Putra Fadil in P4, Giancarlo Maurizio, we were talking to on the grid, P5, and defending champion and championship leader by a single point, Nazarul, P6. It was Julie Atko uh, Atmoko for Team One for All, the Indonesian in P7, alongside his compatriot Felix Putra. Mulya for uh, La Yamaha LFN and why you add you to race tech 60 racing team in the easy to spot lime green row four and it's John Emerson in Guito for Forest One M Evo Yamaha next to him fellow Filipino April King Moscado and outside Fami Basam P13 this is row five Gupita Krejna Wardona for Forest One M Evo Yamaha and the Yamaha sniper Alongside Afif Amran, who won race two last time for the Pittsbike team. And Peter Ponglo Boimpeng, team one for all, always seems to be there or thereabouts. Yeah, so much quality there. On leading row six is uh, Fajrul Sham. Next to him, Masato Fernando. And outside of him, Shafiq Rosli. Who I think is a, another winner here in the past. Amral Afif Mus Arif Musa for SCK Honda Racing Team comes in. Alongside uh, Reikat Yusuf Fadila in P20, so 20 starters today. The championship leader is Nazrul Izat, bike number one, because he is the defending champion. And uh, he will be starting on row six. But the man to really look out for, I think, is Aki Daziz, who's on pole and just seems to understand this circuit. Yes, he does, I'm not gonna argue with you there, Des, that's for sure. So let's see what the number 13 can do. He's going to join his starting position late. It's the pit spike on my GRT Tech 2 team. Waiting anxiously in pit lane. There's nothing they can do now. When everybody is in place, that is the man who will be on pole position. The orange and black of Aki Daziz. It's a long wait. Right then, the green flag and the red flag. And we are just about set. It's six laps of the track. Red light is out, and we are underway, and it's a strong start from Murrubil Vitoni. He gets away very nicely, does bike 157, right in the middle there. And he's dragging along with him, Aki Daziz, in the orange and black. But the man leading the way is bike number 13. Uh, Akid Aziz. Yes, yeah, Faris Putra came through there as they jostled their way through turn one, and Nazarul's come up from row two to join him. I do apologise. It's uh, Faris who was in the orange and black. Akid Aziz is in the in the blue, as he has been all season. Okay, everybody's got away cleanly through turns one, two, and three. As they come leading down, Nazarul is up Bahodin. We've seen this from him in the past. He does like to be in the leading group to stay out of a little bit of danger. Nazrul is at. Now it's Aditya Fauzi coming through. Nazrul is at just uh, leans back into P3. A couple of people have to take evasive action. Yep, a bit of paint swapping there as they came through. Everybody's still on board, happily. Slight incline as they come into this. Uh, Left-hander. There aren't many left-handers on this circuit. See, so, yeah, Aditya Fauzi at the front there. He does like to to lead. You've seen him do it often, happily sitting at the front of the groups. The young race tech 60 rider. Come under the Indian oil sign. That's the uh, official oil of the Asian Road Racing Championship. That just takes him to a right-hander. Everyone's being very conservative on this first lap. Yep, the two SCK bikes are in their starting positions at the 19 and 20 positions at the rear of this field. But at the front is the number one. He's just been mugged for that P1. 
at the end of the first lap by Aditya Fauzi. Aditya Fauzi comes through in the lime green, and that's uh, also why Waji Triloxana showing his colours. And loving the work, though, of Najal Izabahud, and he just stays in that leading group. Has to pile on the brakes there, though, and goes from P4 to about P9. Literally just because he put uh, the brakes on a little bit earlier. Faraz Putra comes through. And the, the man in the lead there, well, is that Ahmad Afi Famran, who's come right away from P14 to take the lead at the early stages of lap number two? It is bike number 50. Yeah, Akira Ziz got shuffled back. I think nazarul has gone backwards as well since they crossed the line. Well, he put the brakes on just a, a little bit early and was forced back into a... A real scrum alongside them. Bike 11, Ahmed Fazrul Sham has got up there. Everybody is up there. There were 20 at the start, and there's 20 now within two seconds of each other. Oh, we've got a crowd, and it's one of the pits bike. It's Ahmed Afi Amran and Faris Putra. Ahmed Afi Amran has gone. And the winner, race two, last time out. He is out early today by Russell. Yep, and he'd come up so strongly from... Uh, Further back on the grid, he just got himself up to the front and off he's gone and he's taken out another really promising front runner, Faris Putra. So now there are 18. Well, that was a, a real upset. Mohamed Afif is such a, a dangerous man to, to be behind you. So in some ways, others will be relieved that the, the threat of Ahmed Afif Amran has gone. And Faris Putra as well. Fami Basant made short work of that uh, starting from the back of the grid disadvantage, as we thought he might. Coming through at the end of lap number two, we are a third of the way through this race. We have a, a new race leader, and it is uh, Dimas, Dimas Juli Agmoko, bank number 202 from Indonesia. And, uh, I saw a Nazarul then, just uh, point his elbow in the direction of uh, Murabil, just to uh, put him in his place. And I'll tell you what, Des, I think this final turn, turn 14, will play into the hands of Nazarul with those amazing finishes that he manages to pull off. So long as he can have the right line, 177 is uh, Aditya Fauzi for Racetech 60 Racing Team. Right behind him, well, it's uh, right behind him for a moment was Nazrul, but Nazrul leads the way once again. He has this propensity, he likes to be there or thereabouts at the front. The man who led at the, led at the end of the lap, Dimas Juli, he drops down as they go under the grandstand. That's a tight right-hander, isn't it? It certainly is, and Masato Fernando having a much better race. Uh, the number 17 there in the kind of mint green number 17. Akid Aziz, where's Akid? Bike number 13. Stuck in the middle of the pack. He's been so, so good throughout practice and fastest in qualification. Yeah, his Cardinals teammate already out, of course, Afif Amran. Pitts bike, got transferred. Correct. <laughs> so long associated with the, yeah. that team. But Nazrul is a Bahudin from Uma Racing, Yamaha Maju Motor Racing. He's got the lead. And close attendance is Dimas Julia at Moko. Team one for all. It's getting very, very tight. And the lime green of Racetech 60 make a move in there as well. 177. Aditya Fauzi. Aditya will have the narrowest of leads from Shafiq. And the first time we're seeing uh, Mazato Fernando in the mix as well. Yeah, and he's looking like he's enjoying himself as well. Zato Fernando, bike number 17 from Philippines on the Yamaha Sniper 150 for the G Ren Kobe Motor Oil Racing Team. And they used the full length of the uh, full width of the track there as they came down the home straight. Murabil and Nazarul, I noticed, were way off uh, inside the white lines. The blue of Ahmed Fazrul Shan. Still looking to see if Akid Aziz can make any kind of a move. It's been such a good weekend for him. Instead, Pitapong Luboimpeng makes a, a burst for the front, followed by Felix Butramulia. 
for the Yamaha LFN Indonesia team. Yeah, got a good couple of riders this year. Team one for all, in the shape of Pirapong. It's hugely competitive throughout, there's yeah, good riders. Dimas Juli, Pirapong established, Dimas Juli full of potential. 14 leading the way is Pirapong Luboimpeng, just behind them. Ahmed Fasral Sham is in the mix as well, he's got himself up into P4. Peter Kresner has made a little bit of a move, the green livery of Racetech 60. They've got, well, one in the middle of the pack and one towards the end of the pack. And Nazrul is at Bahodin. Looks back just to see where everybody is. Yeah, look, coming on to the outside now is Fajrul Sham. Shafi Crosley goes through on the inside, through the KYT corner. That's one of the right-handers bunching up nicely. Well, impossible, just impossible to call. Shafi Crosley, 36, in the middle of that group. For Uma Racing Yamaha Majumota. Just goes on the outside, but Nazrul is a Bahudin. Gosh, he just seems to get himself in the most magnificent positions Nazrul is at, and he's leading through lap three. Is there enough of a, a runoff to actually get a toe and overtake on the home straight here? Perhaps a little bit, yeah. For the underbones, perhaps. Well, I think they'll, yeah, they'll probably end up fanning out, but I, I really do fancy Nazrul to get the right kind of exit from turn 14. For the first time, we're seeing the uh, orange and black livery of Akid Aziz just beginning to make his way towards the front of that group. He's, well, he was in P6, then he's swallowed up and moves back down to P9. That allows uh, Ahmed Fazrul Sham to have a, a moment in the spotlight. Yeah, both the 4S1M Yamahas of Gubita and John Emerson and Gito are up there in the mix as well. Well, who isn't? <laughs> you can see the orange of Akira Ziz, who's uh, quite a long way, well, not a long way back, but several places back from the front of this group. Midway through this penultimate lap, Nazrul Izat again, just on the shoulders of Ahmed Fajrul Sham, leading the way is Peter Bonglu Boimpeng for Team One for All, the tie. Bike number 14, then Ahmed Fajrul Sham comes through, also coming through, Shafi Grosli. Of course, they're rivals in the Capri competition that takes place in Malaysia. Similar setups the 150 cc underbones again indian oil overlooks and ahmed fazrul sham leads the way yeah, he hasn't had the best free practice or qualifying but uh, he's made his way to the front for the last few laps fazrul sham dimas julie is in there as well alpine stars corner nazrul is that he just keeps popping his head out bike number one uh, I'm here, I'm in the right place. You guys don't need to worry about me. At that corner, if you get the right line, you can maybe get a, a pull through. It's Ahmed Fazrul Sham who has it going into the final lap. Ahmed Fazrul Sham from Shafi Crosley, Pirapong Leboimpeng, Aditya Fauzi, Giancarlo Maurizio, Nazrul Izzat, Akid Aziz down in P8 at the moment. So it is a sprint. It's a one lap sprint, Barry Russell. 0.9 of a second covering the first 14 rises, riders, Des. As you do. As you do. And leading the way, there is Akid Aziz. So, has he timed this perfectly? It seems like he has. Getting himself into the lead and into the consciousness of the other riders for the very first time, just at the start of the last lap. 157 going through is Murabil Vitoni, who was second on the grid, so don't count him out. Number one, Nazrul Izabahudim, in the familiar purple of Uma Racing. Akid Aziz in the orange and black, there he is, just going around the outside in P4 at the moment. Forced very, very wide, as was 157, Murabil Vitoni. Yeah, waves a hand in apology, but uh, he kept it gassed, and uh, no harm done. Leading the way for the first time, we're seeing John Emerson and Guito. But he's swallowed up by the rest of the pack, including 27 is a uh, compatriot Giancarlo Maurizio. <laughs> oh, this is impossible to call. Isn't it? And uh, yeah, there's only one bright green bike there of Aditya Fauzi. He's a little way back. I'm just looking for the number one. There is number one on the left of the screen, just being squeezed out, drops down into P6. Akid goes around the outside. Time is running out to get into position. 
And look at this, it's 17, Mazzato Fernando, uh, sorry, 27, Giancola Mauricio, who is leading the way. Behind them, real contact involving Nazrul Izzat as they come into this final corner. Right, the timing has been done absolutely perfectly. And the man who is going to lead the way is 27, Giancarlo Maurizio. Ahead of Gupita Krejna, Akira's is P3, Aditya Fazi for Murable 5, Nazarul is at 6. But how about that? He led for best part of half a lap and gets full congratulations from Nazarul is at. Yep, as well he might. Uh, Team Uma, Philippines. Congratulated by Team Uma, Uma Malaysia. Uh, but that was a brilliantly timed move from. Giancarlo Maurizio, who kind of opened his heart to Daniel on the grid, saying that he was nervous and feeling the pressure. Jubilation with the two parts of the Uma Racing setup, Filipino side and the Malaysian side. And good bit of Krishna, he was close all the way through as well. Came through really well. Jonathan Eberson in Gito was very close to him, but dro dropped back and ended up finishing seventh. Nazarul was six, so a solid six for the championship leader going into this anyway. There's no doubt your magic spreadsheet will uh, update us very shortly. Yeah. <laughs> Moves on to 41 points, so he's uncatchable at the top. Nazarul is at. But this is such a competitive competition. Giancarlo Mauricio, the third different winner in three races so far. In fact, the, we haven't had the same podium. Nobody has made a podium twice this season. Exactly right, Des. Fantastic work. John Emerson and Guito, a very respectable P7 for, for him. Yep, and another Filipino winner. Waiwaji Trilaksana, he struggled a little bit. He was a, did not finish Waiwaji. Yeah, we didn't see what happened to Waiwaji. He just uh, quietly disappeared off uh, that back group. Or was it he and Afif who were involved? No, um, Afif, Afif doesn't finish either. So Afif won last time out, did not finish crashes today. As we look at the, the finish for Giancarlo Mauricio for Uma Racing Yamaha Philippines on the Yamaha Sniper 150. And in the end, it's quite a significant margin of victory for him. Point three, which is a country mile in underbone language. Everybody goes through. Well, that's how you've got to sort out who is who is doing what. It's thousands of seconds right the way down. It's like a moving Jackson Pollock painting. Very good. What are we? Less than less than a second. Less than a second separating one from eleven. But three tenths clear at the top. Giancarlo Maurizio, along uh, ahead of Kupita Krishna Wardena for four S one M Evo Yamaha. Akid Aziz in P3, a further tenth down. Two tenths down on him is Aditya Fauzi. Then Murable Vitoni, a tenth down on him. Uh, half, uh, five hundredths down is Nazrul Izzat. Another very good P6 for Nazrul Izzat. John Emerson in Gito in P7. Uh, two hundredths down on Nazrul Izzat. And then Felix Putra comes through. Just two hundredths down on uh, John Emerson in Gito. There, your top eight. Fahmi Bassam, a winner in race number one. P9 here for bike 222. Again, within eight tenths of the, the winner, Pitaponglo Boimpeng in P10. April King Moscado, three Filipinos in the top 10, or top 11, sorry. Ahmed Fazrul Sham, a leader coming into the final lap, finishes in P12. Shafi Grosley, second coming into the final lap in P13. Mazato Fernando, a leader on the final lap, finishes in P14. Andrei Kat Yusuf Fadila, that's a, a good result for the SAK Honda Racing Team in 15. No points for Amal Arif Musa, the second SCK Honda rider. Nor for Dimas Juliat Moko. Wow, that'll upset him. Or for Faris uh, Putra, Mohamed Fadil of Cardinals Racing. Wayu Aju Chilaksana and Ahmed Afif Amram did not finish. Full of surprises again, Des. Underbone. You win the Underbone Championship. You put some consistency together. And it's a, a remarkable achievement. That's why I think it's a good start for uh, Nazarul. One podium, a fifth, a sixth. Very impressive as we look at on Zhuhai. As the riders come through, the purple of Team Uma Racing. Lots of smiles, as you'd expect. And uh, 
There'll be lots of Filipino smiles and lots of Filipino chatter. Good mood in the pit lane tonight. Uh, hoping that we can, uh, through that scrum and through that excitement, uh, get a post-reaction. But there is the park firm, mate. It looks very hectic down there, Barry. It does, yeah. I just uh, spotted Daniel there in the, in the scrum and other team members getting themselves unusually in front of the camera. A little smile there from uh, Nasha. <laughs> Snarling. <laughs> so three races gone in this season. Uh, John Emerson and Guito, Felix uh, uh, P8, Fami Bassam. Trying to think who, um, who else really might be a bit frustrated. Ahmed Fazrul Sham, who was leading. He so often does lead Ahmed Fazrul Sham. And now coming into focus to give us some focus on the race that we've just seen. Let's go down to Daniel Bogus. We're down here with Giancarlo after a fabulous under 150 ride. You said on the grid that you want to push for the win yeah. and you finally got it now. How does it feel? Now at first I didn't expect to win. So after two years I finally make it. Yeah. So all the plans uh, devised properly, it executed properly I mean. Then I managed to take this position without any errors, without any body contacts, just skills and um, safe riding. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderfully said, John. No words can describe. No words can describe. And to all Filipinos, rider, maraming maraming salamat po sa lahat ng sumuporta. Sa wakas na kuha din natin. And sa mga sponsors ko, Yamaha Philippines, UMA, SEC, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo. Okay. Beautifully said. Congratulations once again. Highlights of the first race of the weekend from Zhuhai at the Underbone 150 CC category. And John Emerson in Guito involved fairly early on. Giancarlo Maurizio back in P5 on the grid. Uh, bike number 27. Keep an eye out for him. But throughout the whole five, la uh, six laps, Barry Russell, there were multiple, multiple race leaders. Yeah, there were. And it was a pretty clean race, but one of the closest, even by Underbone's incredible standards. Uh, this was so close with less than a second covering the first 14 or 15 for almost the whole length of the race. Ahmed Afi Famran just in P3 there in the orange and black. It looked like he was uh, going to be in a good position. In fact, Pitch Bike were in Ooh. a good position. Then he just goes in and he takes out. Uh, is that, um, that was Faris, Faris that he Putri, took out. Yeah. yeah. Just seemed to lose it, did uh, Ahmed Afi Famran. So last racer's winner out. In the meantime, Coming through from a long way down, bike number 36 there was uh, Shafi Grosley. He looked in good nick. A little bit of body contact there for Nazarul Izat. We got two laps to go. Ahmad Fazrul Sham takes a lead. We must have had 12 different race leaders out of the 20 riders who were out there. Yep, I do think we did. I will count that up actually a little bit later on. Shafi Grosley with the fastest lap as we come into with two laps to go. This is bike 14, Pitabonglu Boimpeng. Team one for all, one of those race leaders, Ahmed Fazrul Sham, bike number 11, another of them, Nazrul Izat had led, Akid Aziz never did lead, but Mazato Fernando did, and Giancarlo Mauricio timed his um, spurt quite perfectly, John Emerson and Guito, bike number 22, he had his moment in the lead, but then with about a third of the lap to go, bike 27, Giancarlo Mauricio for Uber Racing MMR Yamaha Philippines, he comes through and he wins by quite a margin ahead of Gupita Krejna, who never was in the lead, but finishes with 20 points. And Akidas is the pole sitter who finishes in P3. Yep, that was going to be my observation about Gupita, is that he didn't actually lead, but he stayed there and he came through in P2. So good for his championship. Will anybody make a second appearance on the podium in 2024 in the Underbones tomorrow? I think the podium, Daniel is acting as a MC as well as interviewer and commentator for much of the early parts of this uh, practice and qualification as he calls out Akid Aziz who loves this circuit. In second place from Indonesia, he does. If you're going to bet on anybody having a double podium this weekend, <laughs> it would be uh, it would be Akid. And your I race think, winner from the Philippines, I think, uh, quite a happy. Marusio. 
Yeah, could be too, delighted with that P2. And Mauricio utterly, utterly delighted. We're going to have the Philippines National Anthem, which uh, we have had had for this uh, tournament here. McKinley Kyle Paz is a former winner here. But this one is very much belonging to Giancarlo Mauricio, the Philippines National Anthem. Lupang Hinirang, the Philippine national anthem. Proudly, proudly, hand on heart. Yeah. Miss Gong Hong Guo, the FIM Asia vice president, handing out the awards. And Kupita, quietly efficient, Kupita. Former champion, don't count him out. Didn't have a, a good, in fact, two did not finish as Gupita Krejna in the first round. So that's him on the podium, making a bit of a statement. But really big statement coming in from Giancarlo Maurizio. He had a did not finish in a P13. Tamodran, the FIM Asia president, jury president, sorry, handing out the team award to Uma Racing MMR Yamaha Philippines. Well, thanks to FIM for their continued active support of the Asian Road Racing Championships. Mostly, though, congratulations to the three racers, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Philippines. It truly is the Asia Road Racing Championship. And you come top of the pile in the underbones, and you've got yourself through an awful lot of traffic and answered an awful lot of questions. And two years of traffic, as Giancarlo himself said, you could see just how much that meant to him. What does it mean to the overall title? Well, Nigel Izzat still leads. In fact, he extends his lead at the top with that P6 over uh, Muribul Vitoni and Fami Basam and Aditya Fauzi and Wai Aji Trilaksana. So the Malaysian leads four Indonesians. Then comes Aki Daziz. That P3 moves them on to 29 points. But look how congested they are. Also on 29, April King Moscado. Giancarlo Mauricio's 25 points. Take him on to 28. Move him up to eighth in the overall championship standings. This one was decided early last year. It's not going to be decided early this year. Okay, that's the Underbone 150cc race number one, and it was suitably chaotic. I enjoyed that very much indeed. We move on to the AP 250s next after a break. You're at the Zhuhai International Circuit, and this is the FIM Asia Road Racing Championship. Back in a couple of minutes. Idemitsu IRG7. Race bred nano tailored oil for enhanced acceleration and horsepower. Even in harsh conditions, the seven protective benefits of septic guard technology keep your engine performing at its peak. Even a split second advantage can change everything. Born to win. Idemitsu IRG7.
at the end of this race for bag number 36, Mohamed Fairozi, Torakotila. But he started on pole position. Inometsu Bunchu Honda with Sharafud in Asman, bag number 63, and his teammate Erfan Heikel. They had a couple of races in there as well. So that train of five soon became a train of 10. This is just a rehearsal for how congested it was going to be. If five are going taps, this is the chance, but it would indeed be the teammates of the blue Yamahas. The desire from Hurgen, from Cal Vietnam, and from Ferozzi. Look at this line he's taking here. And then they're so tight, they're able to do it. There was a crash that took out Cal Vietnam, but it's a one-two for Yamaha Indonesia. That's for P3, P2, and P1. No doubt about it. It will give Fairozzi Torquatila that he can do it on the international stage. Yeah, the tears have turned to smiles, which is good. Reliving the best of the race of the AP250, a 10-lap race. Ferrosi, winner yesterday. Everybody is bunching up very, very quick. I was thinking about who are the big winners here, and I have to say it's the people who wrote the regulation. Mike number 65, Cal Vietnam. Keep an hour for him. It's just a, a rider error from Erfan. He will continue to learn. I know I'm competitive. I know I can ride at the front. Yeah, absolutely, he has. Yeah, he was fast all the way through. Hershen Atnan led all the way through and controlled this final lap. He did come under pressure from Fairozzi. Tries to think, uh, take too much of a gamble here, Cal Vietnam. You just cannot go that tight into turn number 12. Loses it, and Hershen Atnan is able just to carry on, take the victory. He won in race two. And that is, without him being at his imperious best, you feel. And the winner, Hershen Atnan. Hershen Atna, the clear winner of uh, the first round in Buriram. A couple of, um, well, when was it, in March, a month or so ago, a P3 and a P1. This is round two of the Asian Road Racing Championships, live from the Zhuhai International Circuit. Barry Russell alongside Des Corkill talking you through the races. And uh, there's some really, really good competition going on in this AP250. Um, let's go down, well, let's just have a look at what happened in qualification earlier on today in the 250s. And in qualification, Barry, well, it was a case of uh, some familiar names being up at the top of the pile. Yeah, two Astra Hondas, uh, they went well all the way through. And fun fact, Her Janatna Ferdaus is the only rider in this field this weekend who finished on the podium last time out, less than six months ago. So the field does look very new. Back number 46, Hershen Atna. He wouldn't actually end up on the um, fastest qualification time this time. He had Keandra Ramadipa as a company for Astra Honda. And they post a very good time, but only good enough for P4. Astra Honda Racing not on the front row of the grid. Yep, that's uh, something we are starting to become used to. It was a really interesting session for Sharifuddin Asman. He left it quite late, but timed it well. He made sure he had good track position, and he came through to just get alongside the two Yamahas. Yeah, P3 for Sharif Hood, and he did well as well in round one. A P4 and a P3 to mean that he is genuinely, genuinely a contender. Fairozi, Torikotula, though, for Yamaha Racing Indonesia. It was a Yamaha 1-2 uh, in qualification, and Yamaha really looked like a they put, they put a good engine, they put a good team, they've got a put, put system together here. Absolutely right. And once again, we see uh, threatening from uh, Aiki Yoshi on that four-cylinder Kawasaki. 38 is Araya Gaska, Devani Laksana, also for Yamaha Racing, and he would take pole position. So Yamaha Racing Indonesia, P1 and P2 on the grid. Sharafuddin down on P3. And this is the circuit they go around, Barry Russell. It is, and uh, plenty of overtaking spots here, particularly on uh, turn one, turn three, turn seven, probably turn 11 and 12. And that all important run down to the final turn 14. Yeah, for turn 14, if you get your um, positioning right coming into the corner, you seem to be in a very, very strong position. Okay, let's go down to Daniel Bogers amongst the scrum of the uh, 26 starters down on the grid. Six 
So, the weather has changed once again. We have a breeze coming from against the street actually and the cloud cover is around us. It's cooling down and this is going to be interesting in how to see how it affects the, the setup and everything. But we're going to talk to the man on pole right now, Wahyu. So, the weather is completely different from this morning uh, and it's uh, different from yesterday. How do you feel about this race now? Yeah, uh, untuk race kali ini, saya akan mencoba uh, uh, maksimal dan saya terus konsisten untuk menjadi yang terdepan. Thank you so much. Good luck for the race. So the translation there was that he's uh, he's feeling confident and he's going to give the maximum that he can for this race, as we know he can. But we're going to move over to third on the spot for the front row, and it's Sharifid and Azman. We're going to grab a quick word with him. So Sharifid and Azman. You were looking really strong this weekend. You look strong in Bree Ram, but you're looking even better now. How does it? How do you feel going into this race? Uh, but I will uh, fight with them. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good luck for this race. So now we're just gonna maneuver our way around to second row on the grid. We're gonna talk to the four inline four screamer in this AP250 class, and the ZX254 held by Aiki Yoshi. He's having his a uh, little bit of a ritual going on while we approach him. So. Aiki, it's not been a bad weekend at all for the Kawasaki's, but it's been a bit tough to try and capture the speeds of the Yamaha and the Hondas here. How do you feel so far about this race? Yeah, uh, this course, so stop and go, very difficult, so corner exit, very slow, a little bit slow, so Yamaha and Honda, very fast, but uh, so good, uh, I have good potential this bike, so yeah, uh, I, I think maybe this one is a very intense battle, maybe. Yeah, but uh, I don't lose. I, I can fight, so I hope get the podium. Thank you. We look forward to it. Good luck, Aiki. And we love seeing the Zags to 5 hour up close. You guys have to see this in person if you're around China. Anyways, back to you, Desenberry. Thanks very much, uh, Daniel. Yeah, it, it, interesting. The, the Kawasaki, he, he said it's a very stop and go kind of circuit, and it doesn't really suit the Kawasaki's, whereas the Yamaha's, it does seem to, 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 to suit them. Um, interesting battle between all three of them. Yeah, I great. Yeah, they've all got different characteristics, and uh, the Yamaha's are sweet handling, and they have got some good punch out of the corners. For that Kawasaki, it's going to be about corner speed and top end speed. That's where he's got his strengths. But I think Aiki Yoshi is doing a great job as a development rider here. Ayoshi picked up a, a, a second place in the second race in Buriram. Let's have a, a look at the, the rest of the grid. Here is uh, Fairozi, who's in P2. Had a, Fairozi had a, a P1 and a P7 in Buriram. Got the Idemetsu Bunshu Honda team there. Interesting to uh, hear the conversations from Sharifud and Azman. He, he looks a very confident racer these days. Yeah, he looks tough, doesn't he? He's a really affable guy to talk to, but he, in the end, he just looks like a fighter to me. Hershen Atna in shot there. A double podium last time out alongside Hershen is his teammate, the very youthful Kianda Ramadipa. As for Honda Racing, not used to not being on the front row of the grid. The, the rule changes have uh, kind of evened up the thing, uh, evened up the AP250 category. Yeah, very much so. They're another team, or another manufacturer looking for more corner speed to get on terms with the Yamahas. Cal Vietnam, finish, finish. Don't come off the final corner. He came off the final corner twice in Buriram. Yeah, he said his mistake was when he uh, went back and debriefed himself, gave himself a severe debriefing, was that he was going for the win instead of just a podium finish. Yeah, that was obvious, and he took out a, a lot of collateral damage with him alongside him. There's a number of Chinese uh, racers here as well, as wild cards. Zhang Zhu Ron is the first of them for the Zizhou racing team. Yeah, great performance from him all weekend. Qualified uh, eighth. That's impressive. Yeah, so let's see what he can do in the race. 152, 856 is only 1.5 seconds off the lead. Alongside them, you've got uh, Deandra Tridhardika for the second of the Kawasaki. There's only two Kawasaki's on the grid. Yeah, he's making good progress, getting to grips with that diff very different kind of AP250 machine. Uh, Barrio based in, uh, in Thailand. When we get to it, there's uh, three ties on the fourth row of the grid. Warit. Uh, watch it in and Pierre Wat Patumios. Yeah, all for East NJT. 
terrific team that. Uh, they've got a great Instagram account that I recommend anybody uh, to, to follow. They do some fantastic activities. They train with GP racers. They're always out doing stuff together. They're a really nice, cohesive team. What it's Watcherin had a, a did not finish second time out after a P7 in race number one. Qualified 11th here. As you can see, consistent upper half of the of the field, the East NJT racing team. Yeah, quite experienced in this class. And uh, as is this guy, guy Piawak Patumios. He was in the TVS Asia One Make Championship last season. Good to see him back in AP250s now. Yeah, and a very good fourth place in Boiram on race number two on home soil. And, and here, this is quite a respectable position on the grid. There are 26 out on the starting line, including a number of wild cards. Second, Persian Atna in fourth place is uh, the championship leader ahead of Firozi Torakutula, Arai Agaska. So it's an Indonesia one, two, three. You had Kiandra, who's fifth. Only Sharafud in Azman is in the way. As we look at the East Garage. Yeah, and the two, there's the safety car and probably the medical car just behind them. Just swooshing into position. Electric powered, of course. Kilometer to Ubuntu Honda. Giving a good face right then. This is the formation lap, and it's a, a hefty old grid. It'll be 10 laps of the circuit for the race once it gets underway. Really keen to see if uh, Sarafud and Azman can really take this to the Yamahas. Here is the starting grid for race number one. Arai Agaska for Yamaha Racing Indonesia alongside Firozi Torakundula and Sharafuddin Asman for Idumetsu Bunchi Honda. And down, we have to say, on the second row, Herjanat of Ferdows for Astra Honda. Next to him, his young teammate, Kianda Ramadipa and Aiki Yoshi for Motul Sniper Manual Tech on the Kawasaki. Cal Vietnam, another good performance for Honda Racing Vietnam. Just finished the race, Cal Vietnam. Uh, Jiang Jiu Ron, that's terrific on the Yamaha YZF for Zizhou Racing Team, a local team. And Deandra Tridhardika for Motul Sniper Mantec in P9. Row four is locked out by East NJT Racing Team, led by Warwick Tong Nopakun, Watcherin Tum Timon, and Piawat Patumios. Moving down onto row five, Erfan Heikel, Idimatu Bunchu, Honda, another one who I think uh, would like to just finish races a little bit more consistently. Gaudi Ang for one for all, Wonder Vacations is the second of the wild cards from China. Kevin Kintal from Idimatu Honda Racing Indonesia, great experience for him to be amongst this quality of race. On to row six, we've got two Vietnamese riders, Nguyen Ton An Pu and Hu Tri for Honda Racing Vietnam. And outside of them for Subo Racing Team, Ni Tian. Magnificently named Alfonsi Rey Santos da Kigan for SDG Team Hark Pro in P19 alongside Shun Cheng Jiang of TY Antares and Zhao Ri for Xi Zhao Racing Team, the second of their races, and she is in P21. And P22, Hu Tong Ming for Bobby Tech Engineering Racing. Most Imparam Ban for Idemitsu Honda Racing India is 23. And P24, Wang Jiadong for Victor Racing Team. And two regulars, uh, Leong Nang Tse for Victor Racing is in 25th place. Pit Spike One Way JRT, Ray R. Marco Suba finishes, oh, is down in P26. Formation time. Riders making all kinds of shapes as they settle their nerves down and get into position. The man with the red flag stands strong. You wouldn't want to argue with him, would you? No, certainly wouldn't. <laughs> Ten laps of the circuit. It's a 4.3 kilometer circuit. Went well on to the AP 250s where you want to be in the leading group. Red lights, top of your screen. When they go out, we will be underway. They are on. Race one of the weekend, AP 250cc is underway. Sharafuddin Azman trying to just uh, track Ma Mohamed Farozi. Farozi 36, Naray Agaska both on the Yamahas. They were one and two, and one, two, three on the grid are one, two, three into the first corner. Yep, nice and ordered. It won't stay that way, I suspect, but look at that. Uh, three, six, nine. That is uh, Zhang Xiaoran for Sijia Racing Team. 
fantastic start and into P4. Certainly is. That's, uh, he's looking very, very strong, isn't he? Is uh, Joran on the Yamaha YZ in P4 at the moment. The Yamaha's looking good. Where are the Kawasaki's? They've dropped off just a little bit. Ay Ayoki in the green livery there comes round. He's going to make most of... Um, well, it's about to get choppy here. This is where it's stop-start for him, and the Kawasaki's really need to most, make the most of the second part of this circuit. A real credit, as you say, for Zhang Joran. He moves into P4. Yeah, we were watching him all the way through free practice yesterday. He's been really consistent, really quick, unfazed by the quality of the company he's in, and that's Cal Vietnam getting out of shape a little early in the session. I'd rather now than on the last corner for Cal Vietnam. <laughs> I'm, yeah. just, I'm just willing him to, to finish a race, even if it's a, a little bit lower down, just to pick up some points and get some confidence that he can finish races. Bike 65, the man we're talking about. Yep, yeah, he's just nudged ahead of Zhang Juran. Lap one of this race, and it is the Yamahas and Sharafud and Asman who have been able to pull away. Zhang Juran has just been pegged back and Wow, how do you stick to these Yamahas? This is looking very, very impressive. Very, very good. Looking good, but uh, Sherifuddin is uh, getting amongst it. And uh, just before that, we saw Zhang Joran leading the two Astra Hondas. That was uh, a still worth taking for the photo album. It certainly was. And we saw there on the long straight, that's where the Kawasaki has that little bit of extra grunt. Made up a lot of ground, but it's such a technical course that uh, the Kawasaki in the green is fall, falling away just a little bit. Cal Vietnam is in P4. Behind them, you've got Hergen Atna Ferdows for Astra Honda Racing. He's the, the first of the Astra Hondas. And the Kawasaki just behind them. Yeah, and look at that, Sharifuddin. He's so up for this fight, isn't he? 1v2 doesn't seem very fair. Sharifuddin will be okay with that, though. But he's just eased out. Just had a, a little game of chicken there in which uh, Sharaf Houdin decided, no, nope, now's not the time to really give everything. Just hang in there. In the meantime, for Rosie Torricotula, who's chasing a second win of the season, has got himself a lead of maybe eight, ten bank bike lengths. And Cal Vietnam has got close to Sharaf Houdin Asman. So it's Yamaha, Yamaha, Honda, 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 Kawasaki. And then the Yamaha of Zhang Juran. Chinese rider for Shijia Racing Team in his back in his starting position now, P8. Still more than respectable. He's holding off uh, Erfan Heikel. And Watcherin of uh, East NJT. There is the, the battle. Where is that? That's battle for P6. Just going through there was Keandra. Yeah. Back 2 1 2 and Ayoki. Yeah, it's a good, good one to watch how Ayoki comes out of turn. 14 and onto the straight compared to the others. Cal Vietnam and Hergen Adna Ferdows have made it a, a group of five at the front. Yamaha still leading the way of Fairozi Torakutula. Pleased for Fairozi. Pleased that he's got a, a good ride. He was so competitive at Underboom. And now uh, he's stepping up to the 250s and looks very much the part with this Yamaha team. Yeah, he started to come good when they were still running the R25s, and that's uh, one of the Chinese bikes out there. That's the number 40 of Shun Cheng Zhang for TV and Torres Racing Team. Cal Vietnam, again, a good performance. We've been watching Cal Vietnam over the years, improving, 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 so that now he's a genuine contender for podium places of the two DNFs in weeks one and two, or rounds one and two. I really suggest that. A little bit of a wobble for Hergen Atna. Forced wide. Yeah, Hergen having to work hard to stay with this group. Coming through at the back is Erfan Heikel. Just getting the better now of uh, the man who's going a little bit backwards, Zhang Juran. This is a fearsome pace being set by Fairozi. 151.6, yeah. which is 
not the fastest lap. The one, the fastest lap actually was the last lap by Hirsch and Atna on 151. Uh, dead. Yeah, it was. And Cal Vietnam is uh, also very quick, 151.3. There is Cal Vietnam on the tail of uh, the Kawasaki. You might enjoy the next uh, venue, the Kawasaki's at Motegi, which is full of long straights. That's a fabulous chicane just before the <laughs> finishing line. But more of that. Uh, later on, that is uh, round three of the competition. This is round two of six that we have. Oh, and oh, out. Oh, and that is uh, Gia Rui, the only uh, female in this class Look for Xu Zhao Racing Team. Not teammate of, uh, yeah. sorry, Des of Zhang Juran. Yeah. They've got two entries in this, uh, in this class. She's all right. She was looking a little bit winded, but crawling away from the bike. No yellow flags, Hersh and Atten are still the fastest uh, lap at the front. Fairozi in Cal Vietnam. Hersh and Atten are just a little bit further behind. What's happened to Sharafud in Azman? He's dropped down to... Actually, what has happened to Sharafud in Azman? He's gone backwards to seventh. Like 63 is the man in question. Yeah, he's been uh, dropped a little bit. Oh, Marshall uh, in the foreground there. That, they think they're moving. Yeah, that's the uh, Shijia Racing Team Yamaha of uh, Gio Rui, who we saw just crash out. She was in the gravel, so uh, no yellow flags. And as we carry on, it is still Farosi leading the way. Who can make a move? Who's good enough? Kiandra being chased by the Kawasaki. Didn't quite get it right, uh, Kawasaki, and he's overtaken Ayoshi by Sharafuddin. Yeah, it was time on the exit, as did one of the, the one of the East NJT bikes a long way in the background. Persian, a 150.9. He's getting quicker. He's had the two fastest laps so far as we look at his teammates and the battle for P5. Persian Atna, who's the Championship leader with two uh, podium positions so far. It's yeah. a 10-lap race, so we're approaching halfway. And the Yamahas, we feared, would pull away from everybody. It's not worked out that way, Barry Russell. No, Hergen's quality is, uh, is really good. He's really established himself as a front runner. And as you observed, Des, he's getting, been getting faster and faster. Kendra signals for Sharifuddin to follow him. That's a bit cheeky. And the Kawasaki, once again, has just got that extra burst of acceleration. Looks to go on the inside of Sharifuddin Azman. Doesn't quite work out. Sharifuddin on the, uh, of the Idamatsu Bunchu Honda team on the Honda CBR250RR. But it's Hirsch and Atna who is leading the way. And Hirsch on a similar bike, then just uh, loses to Fairozi Torakutula for Yamaha Racing on the Yamaha YZF. Not quite, he snatched it back. Cal Vietnam hanging in there as well. Yeah, he is showing some real quality, isn't he? If you look at the people around him. But there is quality right there, Hergen Atna for Astra Honda. And Ferozi. We come through halfway. Hershen Atna leads from Fairozi, from Cal Vietnam. One, two, three. Three tenths between one and three. A further second down is uh, Arai Agaska, the pole sitter. He's got Kiandra, Sharafud and Azman, and Aike Ayoshi. Aike Ayoshi made up two places under braking into turn one. So all the problems that he was talking about, the difficulties with braking, he seems to be mastering them. The Yamaha of Arai Agaska has just been swallowed up and has to take a little bit of evasive action to avoid the back wheel of Ayoshi's Kawasaki. Sharafud in Asman, bike 63 at the end of that little uh, group of four. And the Yamaha goes inside the Kawasaki. That's the stop start that uh, Ayoshi was worried about and then he tries to get a little bit of oomph coming out but the Yamaha just has that little bit of extra grunt. 
Mujin Adna still leads the way from Fairozi. This is intriguing. How Vietnam stalking them. Ayoshi in P5 behind Arayagaska. This is the battle for P4. Yeah. Fantastic pace at the front in the, in the mid 151s. It seems to be the uh, it seems to be the pace. And uh, Zhang Zhouran, shout out for him once again for Shijia Racing Team. Still in the top 10 in P9, ahead of the East NJT Hondas. Seven. Aim with a genuine podium chance. You're wondering if anybody is just holding back. Sharafuddin has that reputation, just staying close. And then once he gets to the final stages, then bike number 63, with all his... Uh, World Championship experience. And has got the ability to maybe just uh, increase his pace a little bit. As Cal Vietnam looks on the inside. Farouzi just blocked off by Cal Vietnam. I so want Cal Vietnam just to finish. <laughs> yeah, the podium. A finish, a finish. A finish. <laughs> well, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back him for a podium because uh, I, I believe him that he had given himself a stiff talking to. That's bike number 65 that we're talking about, the Honda Vietnam entrant, who's in second place at the moment behind Hersjan Atna. The twin Yamaha threat just behind them. Three very different bikes and the, the rules penalise all three of them separately, but they seem to have got it just about right, the lawmakers. Yep, indeed they do. I mean, those, uh, those R3s have got bigger capacity, but they're down on uh, revs. And ultimately, the control ECU of uh, the ECU partner here, A Racer, keeping things nicely even. Kawasaki would just like a little bit more in the tank. I suspect then the next venue will suit them a little bit more than this, but we'll worry about that then. The Kawasaki in P4. Of Ayoshi. Best lap for him so far on the last lap, 151.3. So he's very much on the pace, Aiki. We saw him on the podium in P2 in race two at Bury Ram, high speed circuit. But look at that. On that last sector, he made the best of that Kawasaki power to come through and get past Cal Vietnam and get alongside Toro Katula. That's the second time he's done that. Ayoshi, and I think he'll be taking an awful lot of, uh, well, learning from that. The data will be up operating through his mind, saying, that's my position. Coming into 12, coming off turn 12, be in good position to attack 13, and then getting a, a good line for 14. Cal Vietnam has dropped back into P3, just ahead of them. Hersjan Atna has now been leading for two and a half laps, under pressure from Mohamed Fairozi Torakatula. Big wobble there from Cal Vietnam. He's giving it everything. Just a gap opening up there between the first two, Hergen and Ferozzi, and Cal Vietnam. Can they close it up again? Hergen around turn seven now. Hergen a 151.9 last time out. His best lap is a 159. These two seem just to be pulling away. Interestingly, the second Astra Honda Racing of uh, Kianda Amadipa. Oh, and there goes Arayagaska. A little bit of a clash, a high side, and he's in the Coco Crunch. Fuming with himself. Smashes the gravel. And then there was one Yamaha. And that Yamaha is in the lead. Oof. And a slide. And yeah. Let's take another look. There he goes. Over the top. And look look at how the gravel does its job though, Des. Almost instantly stops that bike in its tracks and the rider. So misery for the rider, but uh, it just shows you how well prepared these gravel traps are. We saw it yesterday with all the free practice crashes and the mixed conditions. So a spectacular denouement for Araya Gasca. Glad to see he landed very awkwardly as his right foot hit the tarmac. Glad to see he bounced up okay and is walking clear. Yeah, Sharifuddin, meanwhile, moves back up into P3. Aikiyoshi uh, really finding his pace. 
And then being lapped potentially, that's bike number 15 just going through. That's uh, Leong Nangtze. They need to just get out the way. Yeah, he's a regular rider, Leong Nangtze. Hergen Atna leads the way. This is impressive from Hergen. Behind them, Sharafuddin wants the back marker just to move out the way. And the Kawasaki of Ayoki is still in there. Good battle at the front. We are midway through the penultimate lap. Sharafuddin closes the gate. Sharafuddin, you suspect, is now beginning to make a, a little bit of a charge through sector one. Sharafuddin had a 37.7 which is the same time as Farozi, so he's as quick as the front two. But he's not been able to make any real headway on the front two, but there is Sharafud and Asman. Yeah, I guess that's part of the function of the regulations, is that it's very difficult to get an advantage. Farozi leads the way, again the pace of the Kawasaki, coming off 12 into 13. What line into 14 as we look at Hershen Atna leading the way. Hershen, championship leader, looking for back to back wins. Bike number 46. Behind them, Kiandra and Sharafuddin and Cal Vietnam are vying for position with the Kawasaki of Aiki Eyoshi. Kiandra inserts, inserts himself into the final podium spot provisionally as we get into sector one of this final lap. Aiki Oshi really wants it too, Des. But it's nearly a second the lead for the front two. They're going to have to slow down considerably. Oh, Hershen Atna just nearly taken by uh, Fairozi Torkotula. Both of these winners on race day one or round one in Buriram. And look at the speed coming through from Kiandra and Ayoshi. And Sharafuddin, the Yamaha goes into P2. Hershen holds on. Kiandra couldn't quite get there. Sharafuddin, it's a four-way battle for P3. But Hershen Atna and Fairozi battling hard for P1. This is a grandstand finish. Yeah, the desire in those riders, the fighter Sharafuddin. Aiki Oshi really got his game face on. The lead that Hershen and Fairozi had looks like it's going to be good enough to give them one and two. Hershen, fastest lap at the moment, still able to hold on. Sharafuddin just edging out the Kawasaki of Ayoshi into P3. But now we are at the tail end, the final four corners or so. The Alpine Stars corner. Hershen and Fairozi, they are clear. Who's going to get P3? Round the Ooh. corner for the final time. Oh, Hirsch, oh. and they're both onto the gravel. And the victory, thrillingly, goes to the Yamaha Fairozi ahead of Hirsch. Cal Vietnam in three, Sharafud in four, Ayoshi in five. Indonesia, Indonesia, and Vietnam on the podium. Malaysia in P4. Well, that Fairozi and Hirsch, they made this a battle. <laughs> That really was a terrific tussle among that top five. 0.8 of a second covered them at the end. But that was a real nail-biter and a brilliant win. Another brilliant win for Ferozi Torricatilla from Hergen, who rode a really strong race in Cal Vietnam, who looked as though he might have been fading off the back, but came through to take the podium, as he said he was aiming to do, and he's done it. So... Congratulations to the Vietnamese rider. It's fantastic to see a rider from a country where motorsport is not so big coming through and mixing it with the, with the Indonesians and the Malays in this championship. And of course the Japanese Aiki Iyoshi, but another good performance from Aiki Iyoshi. A P5 for the Japanese in the Kawasaki in the green. But there is your race winner. And he did it on the final corner. He was brave. He had the line. We've said all the way. If you have the line going into the final corner, that is the most important thing. The race result is under investigation because both one and two were off the track. Yeah, as that notice came through, I said that uh, the officials will be rerunning that final turn. But uh, 
I always say this as a former official that for me it was a racing incident. Let's have another look at it, Des. As they come round, Farosi, he's got the line. Yeah. Hergen is trying to take it from him. Look where his right knee and elbow are, Hergen. Right up against that Yamaha. It's a straight fight for position. Hergen does well to hold it. They're both, both Fire, off. Firozzi is bouncing away and that back wheel. He's done really well to hold on to that. Race direction, tell us the race result is under investigation, but your experience suggests that that's a racing incident in the battle for P1. Well, I do think that's a racing incident. The other factor is that they went off track limits, but because there wasn't any advantage gained from doing so, I doubt whether that will play a part, but let's, we're going to have to wait and see. Well, it's brilliant for Farosi. It's a second race win of the season. It's a third podium if the result is uh, confirmed for Hirschen at Neferdhaus. So Astra Honda Racing, they may think that the gap is narrow, but at, um, they're still doing superbly. And Firozzi, well, he's celebrating. He doesn't think he's done anything wrong. And actually, it's hard to see what he did do wrong. No, he, he didn't do anything wrong. It was, uh, it was a tough fight between the two of them. I don't think there was any animosity in it. It was just a fight for the win between two determined, really quick riders. So, team celebrating. I think they're right to do so. Cal Vietnam, very, very good result for him in P3. He did pick up points in the two times he came off in Buran, picked up five points each, but this time a podium that is deservedly his. Sharafudim, more consistency. A P4, a P3 and a P4. That's not a bad season for Sharafud and Azman. He'd like it to be 1-2-1. One, one. He'd like it to be 1-1-1. One, one, one. But you can tell he's going to be a contender. Yeah, he believes he's capable of it. I think it is just a matter of time. A lot of handshakes going on, an awful lot of backslapping. Because uh, Farose Torakutula, he held his nerve. Yeah, what we could do with now is a quick decision from race control and the stewards. A P8, incidentally, for uh, Joe Ran, for Qijiao Racing Team. Fantastic. Top 10 finish for a wild card. Congratulations to the Qijiao Racing Team and Zhang Zhou Ran. And I hope the Chinese fans enjoyed that. We certainly did. And he finished ahead of Wacherin and Warrett. And uh, for Itamitsu Honda Racing India, Kevin Kintel. Some big names behind him. Still under investigation. The best lap, Hergen Adner Ferdhaus. A 150.9. Down in lap number four. There was plenty of really good racing going on. As we wait, uh, let's look at some others. Itamitsu Honda Racing uh, India. Kevin, Kevin Kintal, a P11 for him. Jiang finished P17. Nitian for Subo Racing Team in P16. Let's look again at uh, what race direction are really having a close look at. Give us your expert eye, Barry Russell. So let's have a look. Here they are. They're trying to get the right line into turn 14. It's really close. Hurgen's leaning. Hard in towards Ferozzi Torricantula. Ferozzi looking for the apex. There's no effort by either rider, in my opinion, to disturb the other one's line. They're just looking for the same line. They both come off quite badly for it. But race direction, it looks as though they are fighting against these two. And that means that your race winner is going to be Cal Vietnam. Wow, I can imagine appeals coming in left, right and centre from Astra Honda and Yamaha Racing Indonesia. If that is confirmed, we're just hearing over the radio that Cal Vietnam, who came in P3, is likely to get the P1. So both one and two penalised for going off track limits. Yeah, for me, if you go over the track limits, 
and you get a, an advantage by slingshotting yourself off a runoff area, that's one thing. But for going off onto the grass and recovering, that doesn't give you an advantage. 36 and 46 drop one position. Wow. That, uh, that means the Cal Vietnam and Honda Racing Vietnam pick up their first ever win. Probably not in the way he would have liked to have done it, but you look in the, you look on the scorecards later on in the season and it'll show 25 points for Cal Vietnam. Yeah, I think that's a pretty uh, binary look at the regulations that led to that decision. But there it is. And uh, nobody wants to take anything away from Cal Vietnam. We know what he's done over the years. We know how he's progressed. He's been, uh, he's been really strong as he uh, walks across to talk to Daniel very shortly. So they're getting lined up. OK, let's go down to Daniel. He's in focus. And Cal Vietnam will wipe a tear or two away before he speaks to him. So we're done here with Cal Vietnam now. So Cal Vietnam, after the decision from Race Direction, you are now the race winner for the AP250 Race 1. It's been a long time coming, and now you finally have it in the end. How do you feel? Uh, I feel very happy. Finally, uh, Mr. Lucky already coming. From uh, 2016, when the first time I go to here, to racing, to now, very long time. But we take the first time in the winner. So this is, this is my, maybe the reason from God sent for me. <laughs> Very well said, Cal Vietnam. Congratulations again, once again, to you and Honda Racing Vietnam. Thank you. Highlights of a race that's had a controversial ending in which, uh, well, seven riders, Barry Russell, were able to really pull away from the rest of the pack and make it up. A thrilling race. But early, early kudos goes to Zhang Juran, the bag number 369. There he is in fourth place, the, the local rider, really taking it to the professionals. Yeah, and right up there with the factory teams, as you said, Des. And it was these two Yamahas really quick early on. And Herjan Atner, as you said, again, the uh, early quick laps came in from Herjan which took him up onto that group. You can just see he's in P5 there. Seven riders we're talking about include number 65, Car Vietnam, number 63, Sharafu Dan Azman uh, from Malaysia, the Idema Tubuntu Honda racer. He's always there or thereabouts. Here's Herjan Atna. Just let the Yamahas get away and then just started to crank up the, the pace. Uh, he got himself a, a fastest lap um, in lap number four. And uh, as we come through, there is Herjan Atna. He's uh, uh, got himself into the lead. He's leading the Yamahas. We're about midpoint here. Behind them, Kiandra, the young Indonesian for the second Astra Honda. But then there's a big moment, and we weren't expecting that from Araya Gaskar. No, luckily he uh, rolled nicely through the trap, so no harm done to the rider, only his competitive spirit. What that meant is there's only one Yamaha, but the controversy for Yamaha or the problems for Yamaha weren't over yet. We are into the final lap. This is a great battle for P3 in the end, or we thought for P3, because of P1, both of these riders are disqualified. Or they dropped a place, not disqualified, they drop a place. Yeah. So one and two finish two and three. And our winner isn't Fairozzi, it's Cal Vietnam bike number 65. We'll keep a, a close eye on that. Um, I'm sure the Yamaha and the Astra Honda In racing team will place. be talking to Rosie Race Direction, Asia. saying, For Rosie, Dirk please re reassess, but I don't think they're going to. No, um, I, I don't anticipate a, a change in that. Race winner from Vietnam, Cal Vietnam. It's strained smiles for Herjan Atna and Fire Rosie. But you can't take the smile off Cal Vietnam. He may have come over the finish line in third, but for reasons that he cannot do anything to change. For the first time, we're going to get the Vietnamese national anthem at the Asia Road Racing yeah, Championships. This.
And now to present the winner's trophy. To the marching army song for the very first time on the ARRC is played. And the prize to the top three will be handed out by yeah. Mr. Midas Wang, the manager of A Racer. Third place. Got to get over the disappointment quickly of being relegated. Yeah, forced smile there from Hergen. Rosie's still looking a little bit stony there. Well, he thought he had the win, but Cal Vietnam does. Well, luck went his way this time, Des. Yes, it's about time. It's about time. Ms. Gong Hongguo, the FIM Asia Vice President, handing out the team award for the very first time to Honda Racing Vietnam. And they've been so diligent, so hardworking. Such competitors improving race on race, year on year. It's, yep. uh, you're, you're very, very pleased for them. Investing two. They've got two other bikes in this category. And there is the one that will make all the Vietnamese press, all the Vietnamese social media. They'll be agog with this. Vietnam can compete at the top level. It's been coming and it came in strange circumstances but it was kind of inevitable that it would happen this season. And imagine the confidence boost that that will give Cal Vietnam as well. Yeah, he did well to come back from the disappointment of round one, to be fair. Indeed. That does give you a morale a knock. Just teetering on the edge of the podium there, Hergen Atna. OK, I can tell you, though, that Hergen Atna will still be top of the pile with his 16 points. Farosi will be second, but it is closing up just a little bit. When we come back, we move on to the big boys. We've got the Supersport 600cc from the FIM Asia Road Racing Championships from the Zhuhai International Circuit. Don't go too far away. We're back with you in just a couple of minutes' time. Demitsu engine oils are precisely formulated for meticulously engineered Japanese car engines. We are committed to delivering optimal performance. We fulfill this commitment through five ultra-protective benefits known as Quintet Guard. They unleash the peak performance of treasured cars. Drive anywhere with confidence. Feel the excitement in your heart. The highest quality engine oils in the history of Idemitsu. Idemitsu IFG7. Happy what Wang Tanunen getting off to a big start. Bike number 24 gets off to an absolute flag. And it was Blue of Yamaha who made the biggest impact. The start of this Super Sport 600cc. Happy what got in front uh, by Russell. A time when he was eased back into P2. Looking as though it's going to pan out between three riders. The two Bunsu Honda riders, Helmi 
comes through on the inside. We'll keep a close eye on those two. And you reckon that's a racing incident? Yeah, we thought Razor Danica was going to come through with a plan. Helmy was dropping down as Happy Watts really piled on the pressure. Helmy, though, would be able to hold on. But look what happens on the last corner. Battle for P3. The winner, Happy Wawang Tanana. He's got a terrific uh, international record himself. Happy Wawang Tanana. The Yamaha Techni Racing Team Asia back at the top of the podium. Dropped back a little bit, and it was in P5 chasing the leader, Abi Wat Wang Tanan, who got off to an absolute flying start. Well, I think uh, Azroy Hakim goes to ground. Wayne Negroho stopped, and then just uh, the following corner on turn three, Wayne Negroho, he's oh, so close that the bike doesn't chase him. That caused a red flag to come out. The restarted five lap race. Well, Abi Wat got off to a flyer once again, and would go and give him a real scare on the last lap. He carried on where he left off and came really close. The affrontery, we saw the affrontery of Adanan Putra and the uh, response. Uh, Happy Wat Wang Tananom, this is his territory. And he's even got enough time to Dang. put a wheelie, as does McKinley Kyle Paz. Yeah. And the Filipino will be chuffed to bits with that. Take a bow, my friend. Happy Wat Wang Tananom from Yamaha Technic, a win double. Happy Wat Wang Tananom picks up the back-to-back -back wins. Well, there was only one star of the round one in Buriram, and that was Abi Wat Wang Tananon, who got many, many mentions there. A little bow, a little wheelie, a back-to-back -back wins. But as we come into round two of the Idometsu Asia Road Racing Championships in China, Barry Russell, Abi Wat hasn't had things his own way in qualification. Not so much. He's uh, been there as we would expect, but Adananta Putra really has been the strongest so far all round. I would say he's leading, well, he's going to start from pole position. Azroy Hakim Anua was clearly had a confidence knock from two DNFs in round one, but he's worked him his way back up. He seems to have his mojo back. He'll start from the middle of the front row. Here are the best of the highlights from qualification. And uh, you mentioned Helmi Azman, or you mentioned uh, his teammate, uh, Azroy Hakim, but Helmi Azman as always, will be competitive. He had a, a did not finish in race number two after a podium on race number one. Do you expect it? You're allowed a race or two in a 12 race season, but they both had uh, one bad round so far. So uh, the Idemetsu Bunchu Honda team will be hoping that their bad round has gone. Yeah, absolutely. And they've been looking much, much better this weekend. Adelanto Putra, bike number 21. He's the man who's uh, really set the pace. He didn't have a bad time in Boram. He had a P2 and a P3. So he is second in the championship standings, uh, 14 points behind Abiwat, Wang Tananom. And there is, uh, once again, Azroy Haki Mamwa. I'm glad you said he, hopefully he's got his mojo back because that was a disastrous time in Boram. Yep, he said uh, it took him a while to recover, but he's got good support around him from his team, from his family. And I have seen him getting more and more confident on the bike this weekend. I think he's pretty much back up to full power. Race winner here last November. Yeah, Azroy Hakim picking up a P2. This is Abi Watt, who had such a good time. He was finishing in P3. But your pole sitter is bike number 21, Mohamed Adananta Putra from Astra Honda Racing. All right, there's the scrum and the on the grid. And there is the view of the track, which, uh, as you can see from 12, 13, 14, is you get you in a good position coming into turn 14 and you've got a good run to the line. Yeah, it's the exit from turn 11 and 12 you need to get right and then just fly down as fast as you can. I think we can go into that scrum where Daniel Bogas, once again, is about to get us some pre-race thoughts from some of the racers. Thank you, Des. We're down here, and once again, the weather, not what we expected. We were expecting rain by this time. But nevertheless, cloud cover and a lot of wind is the situation right now. And you can see the nice safety cars there, electric safety cars, unique to Zuhai here. But let's have a talk with the riders, the ones who are really going to go fast right now. And it's Adinanta Bushra from Astra Honda Racing. So Adinanta, the weather, very windy, different than what we expected. We thought rain or dry. How do you feel about it? 
Yes, uh, you see, uh, today on the race one, uh, no rain and then dry, but you know, uh, the wind very, very uh, big. Yes, uh, like yesterday on FP3, uh, have a big wind, but I think today on the race uh, was more bigger the wind, yes. Uh, just um, I want to just try uh, make a good pace lap by lap and then stay on the top yes until finish yes can't wait to see it good luck to you, you. and now we're gonna head over to second on the grid it's Azroy Hakim Anwar let's try squeeze and get a word with Azroy real quick as we maneuver around the racing boy representative uh, Azroy last time out here in ARC well in round one it wasn't the best of luck for you but this time we're seeing you almost at your brilliant best once again. You're starting from second. How do you feel about it? Yeah, uh, <laughs> after this point weekend last uh, last race, now uh, I try to focus uh, every single thing uh, and try to avoid mistake uh, on earlier race. So uh, I will enjoy this race uh, and no pressure for this race. Thank you so much, Azroy. Good luck for this race. And now I'm just going to scooch over behind Azroy and I'm going to meet the cameraman right next to Azroy with Apiwat. So, Apiwat, big crash uh, yesterday in the final turn, but you came back and you still managed to qualify on third. Uh, it was a difficult one this morning as well. How do you feel for the race? Yeah, it's, uh, the yesterday is, uh, I caught in the 353. And uh, I, I lose the the setup. The bike is uh, for for making the the plan for qualify. Yeah, and uh, qualify today is uh, I I try in the many thing with the bike. And yeah, it's uh, the good way, but they're not enough. But I try it. I try in the rest one. And uh, we will see. Thank you so much. Good luck to you. Back to you, Desenberry. Interesting to hear the thoughts there, particularly of uh, the man who had such a, a tough old time there. Um, Azroy Hakim Anwar, no pressure on him. Um, and he, he looked fairly confident, fairly cool, fairly calm. Yeah, I mean, having been here since Thursday and having spoken to him each day since then, he's got gotten better and better. And we wish this man would get better and better too. Saquon Zaidi, both hands strapped up. Unfortunately, Zakon. yeah. He'll so. be missing the 1,000 cc later on, Zakwan. Uh, he'll be there supporting his team. Demetu uh, Buntu Honda, Helmi Asman. Now, Helmi is on P4 in the grid, and that Helmi Asma team will be looking to help each other. Here's McKinley Kalpaz, who's won here in Zhuhai in the past, but not on these big 600 cc's. Right. He won on the underbones. And that was in his championship winning year, 2019, before we had the, uh, the long COVID break but he's looking good on that 600. Podium in uh, round one. He's filled out a bit as well. He's looking uh, physically very, very strong. And then Razor Danica Ahrens, who surprisingly didn't win here in his championship uh, season last year in the 250 cc's. Yeah, getting to grips with the 600. He's had a crash in the awkward conditions yesterday, but bounced back and looked good in qualifying. I'm just going there to Tanat Long play out by the look of it. Yep. Honda Racing Thailand for Tanat. He had a, a P4. Actually, yeah, he did, didn't he? He, he, took, um, he took advantage of some of the mayhem going on ahead of him and took a P4 in race two in Boiram. And his teammate, uh, Kjatisuk Singapong. Yeah, chatting to his mechanic there. Crouched down by the tyre warmers. Kjatisuk... Uh, a P7 and uh, a yeah. P5. Yeah, interesting that uh, Honda Racing Thailand have brought two rookies into this class. And here's another class rookie who does look very, very good. Very, very quick on the 600. Why in a Groho? Very, very good. He, he did have that horror crash. Yeah, he was taken out by Azroy Hakim. Absolutely not his fault. And that was after a P4 as well. So why in a Groho on the, uh, on the Yamaha? YZFR6. Interested crowds. Hopefully, they'll fill up one or two spaces. Well, a lot of spaces on the grandstand, but a cracking little venue this uh, in Zhuhai. And there's Sean Juntong, who's uh, been a regular uh, for Victor Racing Team. 
picked up points. He's accumulated 12 points already. He'll be happy if he can carry on doing that. And then you've got the, the two wild cards, Jia Yufeng from Jim 777Y Racing in the all black livery. And alongside him, Zhao Feng Long from Silver Steed Racing. And it's good to get them involved, good to get the Chinese independents involved. Yeah, it is. Uh, both uh, well resourced teams. Great to see them here. Be good to see, see them try another round as well. Uh, Jia Yufeng from uh, Hunan province in the middle of China, 25 years old and not looking overwhelmed by any means in this company. He's on the only Kawasaki. Hondas and Yamahas dominating and it's Honda one and two. 12 starters on the grid for what will be a 12 lap race. And uh, you can anticipate that uh, there'll be a, a, a decent group at the front. Adan Antra has been quick. Azroy Hakim has got something to prove. He and Helmi are always a good combination. Razor Danica and McKinley Kalpaz will eventually get up to, up to pace. And Apiwat, of course, is the man to beat. Apiwat Wang Tananam to the left of your screen in the blue livery. Yeah, just outside of him is Razor Danica, who's getting himself nicely on the pace. We saw him in 600s for a season before, before dropping back into AP250s. Took the championship then. I think he looks a lot stronger now. What did Razor do? Razor got a couple of P7s last time out. Why Negroho? I'm interested to see how he does. I was um, surprised to see him down in, in P9 after he'd performed so well in race number one in Buriram. But it is a, it's a high quality field. It's not particularly numerous, 12 bikes, but you've got seven or eight people who could win races and four or five genuinely international quality. Yeah, that's right. And just looking at the lap times, it's about one and a half seconds back, Wayne Agroho from the pole band, Adenanta. Average speeds around the circuit, around about the 160.4 kilometers, 136.8, anything inside 137, highly respectable. The rain has not materialized, which um, will be a relief to everybody. I'm sure everybody is still looking up. The, the clouds are still up and the wind is still blowing, but no rain. As we come into race number three of the season, race number one of this weekend in Zhuhai, the Supersport 600cc. Adelanta Putra on pole position for Astra Honda Racing Team alongside Idemetsu Bunchu, Honda's Azroy Haki Mamwa, and Apiwat Wang Tananon from Yamaha Techni Racing Team Asia. And on row two, we've got Idemetsu Bunchu, Honda's Mohamed Helmi Asman. Next to him, McKinley Carl Paz, debut this season, and Razor Danica Arens, another rookie this season for Astra Honda Racing Team. Tanat Leong Piao from Honda Racing Thailand in P7. His teammate, Yatisek Singapong, alongside him in P8. And Wayne Nagrohu uh, for Yamaha Racing Indonesia in P9. And it's an all Chinese front uh, fourth row, led by Sha Jin Tong for Victor Racing Team. Regular rider, Jimmy Racing's Jia Feng, Jia Yi Feng, uh, number 77 on P11 and P12. Zhu Feng Long for Silversteed Racing Team. A couple of regular racers in this um, pack absent today. Andy Mohamed Fadli, an absentee this weekend. As is uh, Veda Ega Pratama. Yeah, and this is a very different field from what we saw last year. Uh, the, we've seen uh, Kip, Carlin and Powie move out. We've seen uh, Nakarin move up into ASB 1000s. As some riders depart, others get the opportunity. And that's, uh, as you mentioned, a couple of uh, debutants. 24, though, is the man with the lead. Happy Wat Wang Tan, them back in the Asia Road Racing Championships. Really would like to see Azroy Hakim Amwa, if only for confidence reasons, uh, get a finish. Two crashes, the second one in Boram looked particularly awkward and nasty. Thankfully, he got up unscathed. 
Yeah, absolutely. But as Roy looking really good now, help me looking good too, his teammate. And starting from pole, Adenan Taputra looks as though he's got something special there. And Apiwat always brings 110%. Twelve laps of the circuit. Adelan Tupucha, a 136.8. Two tenths quicker than Azroy Hakim Amwa. Two tenths quicker than Apiwat Wang Tananom. ARRC Supersport 600cc. We are go. And there's a wheelie at the front there from Azroy Hakim Amwa. That just allowed Apiwat Wang Tananon to maybe steal a march, but that's good work from Azroy Hakim Amwa. He's been able to hold on. It was a fast start. He was able to control the bike and he leads. Apiwat Wang Tananon comes through, then P2. And behind them, that's bike 21, Adelanto Putra. He was the pole sitter, but he's been forced down into P3. A slightly tentative start, but uh, everybody's got away nice and uh, easily, including McKinney Calpaz, the pride of the Philippines at 600cc. We've already had one winner at, 600, at um, uh, this particular day. Yeah, nice clean start there. And Happy Wat has got the better of Azroy. That was a Interesting start from Azroy. Looked as though he'd messed it up. Then he recovered and got the power down well. Adenanta now sitting in third after his pole start and getting a bit of a wobble on there. Helmi, Helmi also got himself up into P4. Sorry, Barry. Yeah, there was a wobble there for Adenanta, but no harm done, no time lost. He's got Helmi coming up through. Right at the tail, already just being dropped are the um, three Chinese contenders, Xia Jun Tong, Jia Yifeng, and Zhao Feng Long. Kawasaki, he's at the back, but we come through lap number one. And look at this. It is Azroy Hakim Amwa who leads the way. He got off to a flying start, and this is a good recovery. Happy Wat Wang Tanam right in his wake. May well actually take the, the corner and does. But uh, Azroy Hakim, alongside his uh, wingman, Helmi Azman, the Malaysians two and three, surrounding Apiwat Wang Tanan on the Yamaha. Yep, watching just behind them is Adenanta, who started from pole. Razor Danica keeping up well, and so is Tanat. You're right, there's some good pace there from Tanat. Helmi Azman's fastest through sector three last time, Kiatasak is the fastest through sector one on this uh, second lap. And Kiatasak is down in P8. Yeah, those two Thai rookies have, uh, have really got something. The wine of the engines is Adhanan Putra of Astra Honda Racing, who stepped up from 250 last year. Yeah, three Astra Hondas in this field. And it's really good to see Razor Danica staying up near the front. Bike 123 in fifth place just at the moment. They're just breaking away a little bit from number 85, Kiatisak. Thai Honda rider just behind them. His teammate Tanat just riding with him and I think that's McKinley Carl Paz behind Tanat. Just trying to hang on in there, but look at this. This is a commanding performance so far from Azroy Hakim Amwa for Idumetsu Buntu Honda. He led through lap one, he leads through lap two. He's got the fastest lap. He's got Apiwat and Helmi and Adenanta and Reza Danica all in his wake. But he's setting a torrid pace, is Azroy Hakim Amwa. 138.2, that fastest lap. Yep, and he was a race one winner indeed uh, back in November. So we know he's good around here. Happy what? We know Happy what is good around most circuits, though. And the Yamaha racer not having things his own way today. He uh, was under pressure last time out, Happy what, from Adelanto Putra. And he's under pressure from Adelanto once again. He was in P4. Yeah, there are no easy wins. Sometimes you look at the uh, the double wins and you think it's easy, but it's not. They're very hard fought. 
Less than a second separating one through five. Behind them, Kiatisuk and Tanat. McKinley Kyle Paz has dropped off the pace just a little bit into P8. Why Nagroho on the Yamaha, unable to make any headway. He's just going through the back of your screen. And then you've got Sha Jun Tong and uh, Zhao and Jia, Jiao Feng completing the 12. Only four sec seconds separating one through 12. So the three Chinese lads at the end are, are doing well to, to keep within touching distance. Yeah, that's right. And uh, Sha Jun Tong, he is a regular rider for Victor Racing in this series. He's getting better and better and cool. Nice wide line there from Razor. Yeah, from Razor. Looks similar to another wide line we've seen on that corner. Yeah, that's, that's why it went quiet for a moment. Azroy Hakim Anwar leads still from Abiwat Wang Tananon. It's been this kind of a way. I would call it a procession, but it's a darn fast procession. But these three are just pulling away from Adananto Putra. Adananta, a 138.2 last time out. Apiwat, a 137.8. And Apiwat has got the fastest lap time at the moment. Though Adananta's put in a very fast uh, sector one just to try to reduce that gap. What it does mean is the man in P5, Razor Danica Ahrens, is just being dropped a little bit. Yeah. There's the front four. Yeah, they are stringing out a bit, as you said, Des. Tainat and Kiatisuk in their own little battle for Thai pride in six and seven, respectively. But this is leading from the front. Azroy Hakim Amwa. I love the mental strength of these races. For Azroy Hakim, he's off the back of uh, two nasty looking incidents in Buriram. What's his response? He just goes quicker. Yeah. Yeah, it was rotten luck. He did tell us on Thursday that he had uh, mentally a real struggle to pull himself back, but he's done it. As you said, there's mental strength. It's not how many times you get knocked down, it's what you do when you get up. Adelan Tupuch has just put in a fast lap, a 137.3, just to try to close the gap on these front three. It's the Malaysian sandwiching Apiwat Wang Tananon. What's up in there? Razor Danica is through. There's a, there's a mistake on the graphics. They've missed Helmi. Yeah, Helmi is Helmi is down in P12. So something has happened with Helmi into on the on the um, on the scoring monitor. But Helmi Asman very much is definitely there. Yeah, wonder if that's a transponder issue. Hard to tell at the moment. Adelanto Pucha. Theoretically in P3, but Helmi Asman is the man who is in P3, bike number 32. So they tip through turn nine. In turn 10, they're on the back section of the circuit now. Yeah, the graphics uh, have corrected themselves. Helmi is indeed, you can believe your lying eyes. Helmi Asman is indeed there in P3, bike number 32. Thought you were going to break into song there, Des. <laughs> but breaking into a lead is Azroy Haki Mamwa. Fast sector one. Yeah, Adelant is pushing hard behind them. He uh, he got wide, splashed up a bit of water on the edge of the circuit. But he's uh, really having to work hard to stay on terms with this front three. It's not like anybody's got any real slipstream as Helmi looks on the inside. I thought he was going to have a, a little nibble there. Adelan Pucha, second place in the championship standings at the moment. Helmi's just posted the fastest time, 137 dead. So we're quicker now than qualification times. Yeah, Helmi also on the podium when we were here back in November. Interesting, interesting trio, this. Lappy Watt in the blue on the Yamaha under the grandstand. Still the clouds are threatening rain, but no rain is coming. It's uh, gloomy, it's grey, but dry. 
Yeah, that'll be keeping the track temperatures cool. The air temperature, well, I haven't been outside for a while, but the air temperature was pretty hot early this morning. Elmi still has that fastest lap. Adnan Chaputra is doing his utmost to try and close the gap in, but the men in front of him are just getting quicker and quicker. Razor Danica, he's now under pressure from Tanat. This is P7. Yatasuk McKinley Cal Paz on the, the Yamaha, the first Yamaha, and then Wayu Nagrohu. So that's a, a little Yamaha battle down in P8. And uh, the Yamaha behind them is uh, Shajun Tong, who once again is doing really well on that privateer Yamaha. We're at the midpoint of this race. It's still one, two, three. Azroy Haki Manwa, Idemitsu Bunchu Honda, Abiwat Wang Tannam. Uh, on the Yamaha Techni racing uh, Yamaha, and then Helmi Asman, who still has the fastest lap. Azri Hakim is having to put fast laps in at a 137.4, unable to break anybody. Uh, maybe they, they've broken away from Adananta. Adananta is nearly two seconds down, so maybe Adananta said, those front three are too quick. I just need to make sure I'm picking up 13 points here. Yeah, he opened, uh, opened his account with uh, P2 in the standings. I just wonder what we'll see from Apiwat if he can't break down Azroy because he comes in with a decent lead after round one, thanks to that double win. Less than half a second between one and three. The gap has consistently been there. 0.2, 0.4, 0.4. Thanks to the, the timing screens and the... The graphics boys for keeping us uh, honest on this. Yep, and you're right. And they are telling us that they're on virtually identical lap times. 137.4. So on these 12 lap races, I was thinking tyre wear might come into play, but they're not exactly racing with each other. So tyre degradation is unlikely to be an issue. Yep, I'm sure uh, our friends in Dunlop would make the same point shouldn't be an issue over this distance and not in these conditions which uh well the temperature anyway is uh, pretty much ideal for these dunlop tires all running mediums uh, as he got himself in the lead at the first corner he had a flying start he had that uh, wheelie to get underway got the bike under control and since then he has been in the front yeah, it looks as though it's a little bit hard to say, but I think that Apiwat might be coming under a bit of extra pressure from Helmi. Let's just see as they come down to turn nine. Adelanjo Puccio down in P4. He's a good three seconds down. He just needs to be careful that the Razor Danica Tanant Long Piao battle doesn't uh, impact on Adelanta. Razor stepping up to 600s once again. Uh, just a little bit off the pace. They are five and a half seconds behind the front two. Adelanta racing well within himself. And we'll just stick with this. And uh, 23 is McKinney Calpaz has got ahead of Kiatisuk. So Philippines up into P7. Former Underbone 150cc champion. The fastest Yamaha, though, is in P2. This is Abu Wat Wang Tananom. Still the fastest lap belongs to Helmi Asman, but still the lead belongs to Itamitsu Bunchu Honda teammate Azroy Haki Manwa. Yep, again, virtually identical lap times from the front three. And Adenanta, about half a second slower. Tanat on the back wheel of Razor Danica. This is fifth and sixth. Again, that's been a... That's been one where Tanat has actually closed in on Razor Danica. He was nearly a second down, 0.83 down at one stage. And you can see there, he's, uh, he's looking for ways to get the better of Razor Danica Arans on the Astra Honda uh, CBR 600. Yeah, that's interesting because they were both in AP 250s last season. And uh, Tanat really, without uh, any disrespect whatsoever, wasn't really able to lay a glove on Razor Danica. Different story, though, in the 600s. Front three still well clear. Razor under pressure. This is for P5. 
Razor's season. He had two P7s to get the season underway. McKinley Carl Paz still. Bike number 23 leads uh, Kiatisuk, bike 85, and Wayne Nagrowu. So McKinley Carl Paz, what's he, what's he um, lapping at? 138.8 for McKinley Carl Paz. That was his fastest. And in terms of uh, qualifying, he was a 137.8, so decent pace from him. But I'm mightily impressed by Azroy Haki Manwa and Helmi Asman beginning to put a little bit of pressure on the back wheel of Apiwa. That time he did get a pull, and that time he didn't overtake. <laughs> yeah, but uh, two or three laps ago, he looked as though he was getting closer. Then he dropped back. So this is a bit of a concertina effect happening with this uh, front three. No position changes. And as if we needed reminding, the quality of Azroy and his ability to stay at the front under pressure and stay calm is on display here at Zhuhai International Circuit. These three lapping at a 137.7s, almost identical. Adelanta behind them, a 138.6. Razor Danica, 138. So this front three are pulling away from the rest of the field. They've taken their lead up to, well, nearly five seconds away from Adelanta Putra. And let's not forget, Adelanta Putra was fastest in qualification. This is hugely, hugely impressive from Azroy Hakim Amwa. Because he's having to do everything from the front, which isn't the easiest place to, to have, have yourself. No. You're always under pressure. Yeah, a lot of riders struggle with it. Azroy's really good at it. Cool head on his shoulders. And I know that Helmy would love to get up behind his, uh, his teammate. Happy what's got very different ideas. Azroy is regularly quick through sector one. He's just put a two-tenth gap between him and Happy Watt. And he has a lead of half a second. With two laps to go. Been leading since the very first lap, Azroy Hakim Amwa. Started P2, was fast in qualification, has looked good, likes this circuit. Even so, this is a, a really, really fine race. Can he finish it this time? Well, signs are he will. I'm surprised to see that uh, Wayne Agroho is so far back. For me, 15 seconds back off the leader. A little bit further down, this is the battle for P1. I can tell you that Tanat has got ahead of Razor Danica. We were following that battle for P5 for a little while. Well, Tanat has now gone ahead of Razor. Yeah, through turn nine they go. Sharp left into 10. Indian Oil overlooking them. This is the Edometsu Asia Road Racing Championship Supersport 600cc. 12 races in the season. This is race number three. So we're already at a quarter way of the season. <laughs> Happy about Wang Tananan looking to make it three wins out of three. But unless something remarkable happens in this uh, last lap or so, Happy Wat is going to have to be content with the podium. And a continuing championship lead. Azroy Hakim Amwa leads, as he has on every other lap. This has really been impressive. But Apiwat Wang Tananon, has he got something left in the tank? They all posted a 137s, but Apiwat closed three tenths down. There's only three tenths between them. Yeah, on lap times. Uh, Help me, half a second down that time, and you can see it on track there, Des just dropped off the battle for P1 and P2, if indeed that is a battle. Happy Watt has been chasing Azroy Hakim Amwa all race. Has he left, a little bit left in the tank? Is he able to go oh. through? He is! But the switchback from Azroy Hakim took a big gamble, Happy Watt. It nearly came off, but well done, Azroy. Yeah, aggressive move from... Happy Wat, but it's advantage Azroy, as it has been all the way through this 12 lap race. So he's had one little nibble, Happy Wat. I'm sure he's going to try and get a good exit out of turn 11 and 12. 
that. And really put pressure on Azroy Hakim Mamwa going into the final straight. Again, he has a look down the inside. Good battle for P1. This is where this race will be won and lost. A nervous look from Zul in the Idemetsu Buntu Honda. This is the final corner. We'll pick them up, but look at this. Azroy Hakim Amwa, perfect line. This is a start to finish victory for Azroy Hakim Amwa. A little punch of the fist. That is top, top draw racing from Azroy. Ahead of Apiwat, Helmi Asman comes through in P3. And the mental strength that uh, Azroy demonstrated by coming back from those huge disappointments in round one says a great deal. There was nothing Apiwat could do. He tried, he couldn't get close enough under breaking for turn 11 to get close enough to make the pass. And at the end, it was almost 0.4 of a second advantage, Azroy, as they crossed the line. That means a lot to Azroy. Terrific performance. Right from the very start, he was very, very quick off the line. He controlled the wheelie. He got the power going forward. He led into the first corner. And then despite coming under pressure from Adananta and Helmi and Apiwat, one by one by one, he held them off. And that is a first win of the season for Azroy. It's not his first win here in Juhai, but first win of the season. And wow, the performance of the day. Yeah first finish of the season but uh, I think the tears are flowing there Des he was quite emotional when he talked about round one on Thursday confirmation of this result 12 lap race the intimate Ubuntu Honda of Azroy Hakim Amwa from Malaysia he's recovered from back to back did not finishers in Buriram to uh, pick up maximum points here ahead of Abiwat Wang Tananam who gave it his all for Yamaha Techni Racing Helmi Asman, a solid P3, but three seconds down, he gave up the ghost in the last lap for Idemetsu Buntu Honda. Adnan Chaputra, a further five seconds down for Astro Honda Racing. Tanat Laung Piao getting the better of Razor Danica Ahrens, Honda Racing Thailand, just ahead of the Astro Honda of Razor Danica. McKinney Kalpaz, uh, the best of the second group of um, Yamahas for Yamaha Techni Racing Team Asia, 17 seconds down, just holding off Kiatisuk Singapong in P8. P9, Wayan Grohu for Yamaha Racing Indonesia, 18 seconds off the pace. And then you've got Sha Juntong for Victor Racing. Uh, within 30 seconds, Jia Di Feng and Zhao Feng Long. Creditable efforts for uh, the two Chinese uh, wildcards for Jim 77Y Racing and Silver Steed Racing Team, respectively. Indeed. And another improvement from Sha Juntong, who does not look out of place in this championship. So, big slap on the back as he enters pit lane for our winner, Azroy Hakim Anuar. His prayers have been answered, quite literally. And sometimes you're extraordinarily pleased for somebody. And <laughs> look at the reaction, yes. Yes, he fancies a bit of that and deserves it. <laughs> I'm just looking at Zach Wong, the, the elbow to the helmet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, resisted the impulse to slap him on the back. That wouldn't have gone well. See Sharifud in, in that uh, scrum of well wishes as well. But while it's great news for, Ray, um, for Azroy Haki Mamwa, it's also very, very good news for Abi Wang Tananon because he'll increase his lead at the top of the championship standings. A P1, a P1, and a P2. And he's going to take uh, some catching. Adnan Tupucha seemed uh, just a little bit off the pace. Uh, it looked like the bike setup was right in qualification and in practice. But when it came to race time, very much uh, fourth best. Yeah, he faded. And he seemed to believe when uh, he was talking to Daniel at the beginning that he was going to pull it off and win. But yeah, as you said, there's sometimes... You are really delighted for somebody, for a winner. And uh, this is definitely the case for Azroy, coming back strongly from disappointment. And here is Helmi Asman, let's not forget. He rode a sterling race to finish third. All right, I think we can go down and get some reaction. Daniel uh, Bogus, the hardworking Daniel Bogus is down there. 
talking to the top three. So we're down here in Park Fermi with 3-3, three, three, Helmi Osman. Helmi, that was a brilliant race for you, but during the you just mentioned the last two laps, you just couldn't get in touch with them. Could you tell us what happened in the race? Yes, uh, firstly, I want to say thank you so much to my team, Busio on the racing team, uh, and the Misu Busio on the racing team, and also thank you my family. Yeah, this race uh, was a good race, and the condition was not hot, but uh, I make... I tried to follow up Iwan and try to overtake him until uh, for last lap, but my bike is not too fast in the straight, so I cannot try to break. So in the last two laps, I made mistake in the turn seven. I neutral gear, the gear I dropped and the, the gear was neutral two times. So <laughs> I just keep and I, I look behind and I stay in position. So good is for championship point for the next race. Thank you so much, Xiaomi. Congratulations once again. And now we'll head to P2 with Apiwat Wong Tananon. We'll try to get uh, Apiwat right over. We'll try to get uh, Apiwat too for the interview. Um, so yeah, Apiwat rode a brilliant race, tried to make a lunge on the inside on the last lap. So Apiwat, it was a good race from you. You followed Azra all the way until the end. And we saw you trying. I believe that was at turn seven. And uh, yeah, I just couldn't get ahead of him. How was that race for you? Yeah, it's uh, the the beginning of the lead. Yeah, I I can follow the asteroid. The asteroid is very very fast in the sector two and three. But I can I can manage in control the the wet uh, with tire. But in the middle race, it's uh, the bike is uh, like a uh, slip in the V. Yeah, really difficult to control. But yeah, I forgot is stay uh, forgot on the flow in the asteroid. Yeah, but and uh, the last lap is I I can try in the all take. But yeah, they lose the time. But yeah, tomorrow we will see. I improve tomorrow. Thank you so much, Happy What. Congratulations once again. And now we're going to head to the race winner. And I'm sure this race win means a lot to him. Azroy Hakim Anwar. So Azroy, you said on the grid that uh, this is a fresh start now. And you won the race in fantastic fashion as well. How was that race for you and how does it feel? Uh, I don't know what to say because... I have a hard moment coming to coming to this round because uh, last race I did not finish the race. So when com coming to the this round, I feel uh, my mood is not in the good way. But after practice one and practice three and qualifying, step by step my feeling uh, grow and grow. And then for this race, uh, I only target to finish the race. My, my, my target for before this, but after first lap, second lap, I saw la, like my lap time also quite good. And sometimes I, I hear Api White in behind, but sometimes uh, I don't hear, so I know my pace is very strong. So uh, coming to the last lap, uh, I know Api White is uh, a dangerous rider. So I just uh, make a careful ride. And when he overtake me in the turn, turn six, I think, and then uh, I know uh, he, he already uh, go, and then I start to attack, attack, and, and I, I finish the race. So I'm very uh, happy. Shukur alhamdulillah. Uh, setelah beberapa kali saya ni lah struggle lah. And so terima kasih kepada saya, Bunsi Honda dan family saya yang setia support saya dan saya akan cuba yang terbaik lagi lah untuk esok. Thank you so much, Azrael. Congratulations once again. Azroy Hakim Anwar in the middle of the shot there. There's a wheelie to start. Bike number 20 manages to get it under control, manages to get over Api Wang Tananon and into the lead. And then we could just take his sound by Barry Russell to describe the rest of the race because he got himself into the lead. He was aware that Abi Watt was there, but he was able to hold him off all the way. Yeah, it was such a clever race and so well judged. I mean, that was a really good post-race interview from uh, Azroy. Very, uh, very good analysis of the race, and it tells you a lot about the mentality of the rider. Particularly when he said, my ambition was to just finish the race, and then after a lap or two, I thought, yeah, I'm quick, and he was quick. He's lapping. Uh, he didn't get the fastest lap. That was his teammate, Helmi Asman, who finished in P3. Although this was a procession, and there were no changes of uh, position for the front three, uh, there was always the feeling that maybe Happy One was just holding something a, a little bit off. Behind them, Tanat and Razor Danica, they had a little battle. Razor Danica by 123 would, in the end, lose this little battle to Tanat, who came through in P5. Yeah, he faded over race distance, Razor Danica. 
And uh, we found out what happened to Helmy, who ran with these two all the way through. He said he had uh, false neutrals coming into that turn seven we just saw. Well, lucky for Helmy, it didn't impact him too much. He would get himself a podium, which is his second of the campaign. Up at the front, this is the final lap and turn six. You're, you're quite right. This is where Abiwat Wang Tan and I think uh, has a little go on the inside and temporarily takes the lead. But that's cool play from Azroy Hakim. The scare propelled him to the victory. It was, yeah, really well judged. He knew it was coming. He knew where it would come and he dealt with it. Azroy Hakim Amwa, redemption comes through. You can see the relief on him and his team's faces. Number one indeed, and a 1-3 with Helmi Asman coming through in P3 as well. So first points on the board for Azroy Hakim Amwa. And very, very happy for him. Yep, well deserved. Pulled himself back up from a bad place. Top three being introduced. Helmi Asman, Idemetsu Bunchu Honda. Happy what Wang Tananom, who will increase his lead at the top of the overall standings. From Malaysia, Azrai Hakim Anwar. And again, I think it proves that you can have one bad weekend, you can't have a number of bad weekends in a championship that's uh, six rounds in duration. And Lady Metsubunchu Honda will take the team prize. Let's uh, just take a, a pause for the Malaysian national anthem, Nagara Kuh. Now to present the winners' trophies. We will like Proud moment for Azroy Hakim Amwa. It always is when your national anthem plays. Yep, I have done a job. Stuart Tam, the general manager for Zhuhai International Circuit, who have been such excellent hosts for this Idemetsu FAM Asia Road Racing Championship Round 2 in Zhuhai. He hands out the awards. Happy what? And Helmi Asman. And this. Ride of the day, so far, at least, for Azroy Hakim Amwa. And the team award, Miss uh, Gong Huang Guo for the FIM Asia Vice President, hands it out to Idemetsu Bunshu Honda. And that is a look of real satisfaction on the face of Azroy Hakim Amwa, and deservedly so as well. He and his wingman, Helmi Asman, one and three. Apiwat in between them for Yamaha Techni Racing Team Asia. Apiwat, top of the pile, fourth place in this race. Adan Antaputra will be second overall, and Helmi will help himself as well a little bit with uh, 13 points. But this season, a quarter of the way through, Still a lot of points to race for. Yeah, we never doubted the character and the resilience or the skill of Azroy, and he's, uh, he's shown it all again today. So there the championship standings, a 21-point lead for Apiwat Wang Tanon of the Amaha Techni Racing Team Asia over Adananto Putra. 
36 points for Helmy Asman, 34 points off. Tanat Longplio, how about that? He's in P4. McKinley Kalpaz just three points behind in P5. Razor Danica is there on 29. Kiatisuk on 28. And then you've got uh, today's winner, Azroy Hakim Amwa. And what a re uh, return to form it is for the Idimitsu Bunsu Honda Racing Team. Right okay, we move next on to the big boys, the superbikes, the 1000cc. It's the last race of the day, day one of two at the Zhuhai International Circuit. You're watching the Idimitsu Asia Road Racing Championships from Zhuhai in China. Idemitsu IRG5. Start like a rocket and ship like silk with super bike proven nano tailored oil. Ultra protective Quintec Guard technology distills the wisdom of oil experts. Five protective benefits in harmony unleash the peak performance of your engine. Nano Silky Tech ensures extra smooth upshifting at high RPM. Rocket starts, silky shifts. Idemitsu IRG5. A classic ARRC ASB 1000 to open the season. We had Chip Nakarim, who was looking forward to this race. He was excited. First run for Hafiz, you could see right as they came out of turn three. And uh, yeah, he's struggling all the way there, I guess. Overnight, that meant that there were three at the front. Chip Nakarim, Aslan Shah, Kamru Zaman. Yes, he's been champion before. Yes, he's talked about hanging up his leathers. Three laps from home, he made up seven tenths, two laps from home. Uh, but uh, he had nowhere to go. Aslan left him no choice. It was brilliant. Andy Frid knew he had to keep the bike. But nowhere near as happy as the TKKR racing team. And the biggest smile in Thailand, which is the land of smiles, belong. And for TKKR, well, once again, remaining on the Asian Road Racing Championship roster. Aslan Shah, Kanru Zaman. Looking back at a epic a RRC ASB 1000 for bike race, race two of 12 of the season. Good go on and have a fabulous scrap, Barry Russell. Yeah, they did. It was uh, really good stuff from uh, Hafiz Sarin after yes the yesterday's disappointment. And at one stage, he had quite a healthy lead, but he would make one mistake crucially just beyond the midway point of the race. Yeah, and uh, at this point, that's it. That's what top class racing is all about. Look at that, at one stage, he got through to P2, he was able to hold on. That battle with Hafiz Sharon, final lap. And uh, yeah, Chip Nakarin is putting pressure on Hafiz Sharon. P2 from uh, Haf Hafiz Sharon. The answer is no. Andy Farid, the pride of Sulawesi, takes it for Indonesia. Prizes being handed out by Mr. Mazanori Enomoto, Managing Director of Idamatsu. Congratulations to Andy Farid.
Welcome back to the Internet to FIM Asia Road Racing Championship. We are in China, the Zhuhai International Circuit, to be absolutely precise. And we are about to get underway for the Superbikes, the 1000cc, who will make mincemeat of this 4.3 kilometers course uh, by Russell. They will indeed. There's plenty to look at here uh, with all kinds of turns. We don't, the only thing we haven't really got are gradient changes. But this is a fast track. It's got stop and go and it's got flowing sections. It's a great track for racing. Andy Farad is the heart, leads the championship standings. But this morning in qualification, oh, there were one or two surprises because the rain threatened to intervene. In fact, the rain did intervene. And it meant that uh, the unheralded Lachlan Epis uh, for Evolution Sports Group on the BMW, he would get himself into third position originally, but would be uh, in P5 when it happened, his best performance of the season. Yeah, the whole session was really good for Lachlan. He came out early and he kept the hammer down all the way through to qualify in the middle of the front row. Those who came out early, they avoided the rain and they set the, the fastest laps, um, 27. Kazma Daniel, though, he wasn't on his qualification tyres and he would suffer a little bit because uh, he didn't set a fast lap early on. Yeah, this is Sho Nishimura being wild card and therefore teammate this weekend for Aslan Shah. Aslan Shah was another who set uh, an early lap time. He had a fabulous victory in race one in Boyram. And since then, he's uh, got himself a brand new engine. This is Chip Nacker in third in the championship standings, third in race two in, uh, in Boyram, stepping up from 600 cc's here. Uh, but he wasn't able to really get on with the pace um, that was set by JDT's Hafiz Sharin, who we'll see in just a moment. Nonetheless, Chip Nacker in a best time of 133.6. But this is the man, Hafiz Sharin Abdullah who really got everybody talking on the Ducati. Yeah, that Ducati is really sorted now and have Fischer in looking increasingly comfortable on it. That You can see they're still experimenting a little bit, but he was better than the rest and he will start from pole. He was three tenths, two point, two and a half tenths quicker than Chip Nakarim in P1. So Hafiz Sharim, who uh, got a podium in race uh, two after a DNF in Buriram, well, he will be on pole. Let's go down to Daniel Bogers to get some pre-race reaction down on the grid. So we all expected there would be rain today in one of the races, but surprise, surprise, it's the so final race and it is still dry. A lot of cloud cover, but no sign of rain at all. So let's swing over to this side and let's talk to the man on pole position for JDT Racing Team, Hafiz Shire. I'm just gonna maneuver my way through the cables and let's talk to Hafiz. So, Hafiz, you're starting from a great position, the best position to start in, pole position. It was a good qualifying. Weather, not what we expected. How do you feel about it? Ah, yeah, uh, we try our best. It's difficult to say now, but sure, uh, with this qualifying, it helps us to, to understand all the bike. And also, it's an advantage to start in front, because uh, in the last race, I've been uh, control the, the group, but I've been uh, almost crashed in the bully ram, so let's see what we can do here. It's a certain lap race, and uh, yeah, anything can happen, but we try to control what we can do, and uh, I hope we can see you in the podium and try to be in a better position than the last round. Thank you so much, Hafiz. Good luck for this race. Now we're just going to make our way next to Hafiz, which is Chip Nakarin, and we're gonna bring the cameraman all the way around and let's get to the side of uh, Chip Nakarin. Nakarin, so it's a, it was a good qualifying result for you in the end, and now again the track the weather is not what we expected. How do you feel about this race? Yeah, it's good feeling in qualified tire. I still try to find good setting. From yesterday, we have no time to, to try die setting. Today, I have more confident with the bike and try to follow Hafiz and uh, I think this is not so easy but I fight for the podium. Thank you so much Nakreen, good luck for this race and now we're gonna head down to row two to us someone who has been a real star performer this weekend, Lachlan Epis. So let's try and get a quick word with Lachlan. So Lachlan, the time wise for qualifying wasn't as fast as last year but that's due to many factors such as weather but you were very close to the top. How do you feel going into this race? Uh, to be honest, I was a little bit frustrated with my qualifying. I made a pretty P3 
catastrophic error in the last sector, which I felt I could have been in that front row. Um, but in saying that, we haven't been on the front row the whole time I've been here. So to be able to say that I should have been there is it's a good feeling. It gives me good confidence going into this race. Um, there is no plan. We're going to go flat out, full attack. Um, there'll be no tyre conservation. It's just go forward. Love to hear it. Good luck for this race. Back to you, Desenberry. Thanks very much, Daniel. Yeah, that was a, a nice positive interview from Lachlan. First time uh, we've heard from him this season and uh, he, he spoke very confidently. Plenty of Aussie grit there, Des. Certainly is. Hafiz Sharin, farther, uh, rather more circumspect in uh, his analysis of his chances, but he did look super, super powerful. And he, that Ducati yeah. that looks right, doesn't it? Absolutely. He's got all eyes on him. The weight of expectation that the others perhaps don't have. Um, and, and there's a rider who will absolutely believe that he can take the fight to Hafiz. That is fellow Malaysian, Aslan Shah Kamarizaman, in fantastic form this weekend. What was he lapping? A 133.6, so not too far off the pace, Aslan, with the, with the new engine. His win in um, Boyram race one will long live in the memory. His last year's 600cc champion, so Chiro Minimamoto, getting a little bit uh, up close and personal with the cameraman. And so Chiro, uh, a time of 133.7. Yeah, came through well. They put the qualifying tyres on late and in a way we're fortunate. We've got the tyre data here. Let's see if there's anything unusual. Well, perhaps Nakarin running a soft rear and a medium front. Here's, a, here's a rider close to something great. Yeah, he won, he won in um, the All Japan Championship last week. A different, different series, but yeah. he knows he knows where to uh, how to win. Stop 1000, the tribute to the great and much missed to Ricky Noguchi there on his leathers and his helmet. He's running mediums on that Honda. Uh, Aslan Shah, no surprise, he's running a hard front and a medium rear. He does like to pile on the weight on the front of that BMW. Casper Daniel on the Yamaha also running a hard front, medium rear. Andy Gilang, so it, amongst all the talk around about Hafiz and the Ducati, you've got to forget, uh, got, it's easy to forget that Andy Farid actually won the race in Boyram for race number two. Yeah, he did, and he did it brilliantly. Yeah, he did it brilliantly. He's uh, qualified way down by his standards uh, in P7, so he's leading row three, so he's gonna be looking for a good start. And there's the almost ever smiling Kazma Daniel Kazmayudin. Yamaha Technique, he will come good. Again, I'm looking at their, their qualification times pretty quick, so it won't be too far behind. The tie warmers are still on for replacement rider, Sho Nishimura. He's replacing yeah. the absent uh, Marcus Reiterberger, the defending champion, who's on uh, uh, endurance duties this week. Yeah, another young rider in the, uh, in the big bikes, Sho Nishimura. Just a reminder, of course, Zakwan uh, Zaidi will be missing both races here because in um, practice yesterday he broke a bone in both of his hands so that's a, a bit of an impediment for a, a motorbike rider just a little bit but they're saying he might be back by <laughs> Mategi in a month's time yeah that would be uh, that would be impressive Passowitz apologies to him Astemo SI racing with Tai Honda in P10 and then Chen Yong Hong Yan from Jim 777 racing yeah, Jimmy Racing Team fielding a rider in this class as well. Uh, we previously, we first saw him in 2019 in the Supersport 600. 27 year old rider from Hunan. Oh, sorry, Jiangsu province. Getting lost in China now. And there is Osama Murray, the Yemeni rider. Gritty stuff from him this weekend. He's got a badly knocked around left leg. Yeah, I've seen him hobbling around. It wants to take the camera home. We have uh, smaller cameras for the bikes, Osama. And then in P13 is uh, Chiu Yujo, who had a mishap this morning in qualification. Yeah, looked like a mechanical or a very slow off. But he'll start from the back. Learning experience for Tio Yujo, great enthusiast. And uh, sharing a garage with Evolution Sports. So that's a good move for him this season. In other words, sharing a garage with Lachlan Epis. They are the clouds that have been threatening 
to produce a little bit of precipitation. Looks like we're going to escape with it today, but uh, the rain clouds are expected to hang around tomorrow as well. But they're just looking a little bit dark over there. Let's hope it doesn't interfere in the middle of the race. And there is Zakwan. Thumbs up from him. Yeah, that's about the only thing on his hand he can actually raise at the moment, the only digit. But uh, yeah, good, in good spirits, that's good to see. Because we're sorry to see him, the 2022 champion, not appearing this weekend, as is the 2023 champion, Marcus Reiterberger, who's away on endurance racing duties. And after a poor start in round one, when he took away 19 points, this is going to look like a very uphill climb for Marcus this season. The JDT helmet of Hafiz Sharin. There's a lot of buzz around Hafiz. There's a lot of buzz around JDT coming into the Asian Road Racing Championships. They struggled, lack of preparation in Buriram. Got themselves a P2 after a fabulous battle with Andy Farid uh, Isdaha in race number two. But here they are on pole position and the package looks strong. It's getting better and better. They're still experimenting a little bit. Chip Nakarin on the grid there, acknowledging the difficulty that he's going to have in overcoming Hafiz. Reminder in the overall championship standings, it is Andy Farid who leads the way. He's got 45 points. Aslan Shah, after that epic race one, is on 36. Chip Nakarin, 27. Zakwan, the absent Zakwan, on 26. As is Yuki Kuni. And uh, Hafiz Sharin for JDT on the Ducati is on 20. Just ahead of Reiterberger, 19. And Suchiro Minamoto on 17. The uh, electric safety car swishes its way around. When that comes up behind the grid, they'll be off on their warm-up lap. 13 starters in a 13-lap race. Round three of 12 of the season. And the way the grid positions are set out, as we'll see in a moment, Andy Frid direct on the third row directly behind Hafiz Sharin and he needs to get a really good start from that third row position. In 2023, Reiterberger and Zakwan were one and two in both races. Aslan Shah, a podium in both races as well. Yeah, Aslan does enjoy this circuit. And he will be ready to take the fight to fellow Malaysian Hafiz Sharin. Mark my words. Okay, formation lap is on. Bike 55 is Hafiz Sharin Abdullah for the Johor team. Lachlan Epis saying that like a, a bit of publicity for my team. Let's get to the front in the formation lap. Yeah, he, he always does this in the warm up lap. He's uh, in any session, he's the first bike Ooh. out. A hand up from Hafiz? No, I thought there was a problem. Let's see. Hafiz Sharin Abdullah, JDT Racing Team on the Ducati in P1. Chip Nakarin, Honda Asia Dream Racing with a Stamo on P2. Aslan Shah Shah Kamrazam and TKKR BMW Racing Team P3. And for Yamaha Techni Racing Team Asia, Soichiro Minamoto leads row two from Lak Lanipis from Evolution Sports Group, his best starting position. And Yuki Kuni for STG Team Hark Pro Honda. Andy Farid Isdaha, Andy Gelang as he's better known. Honda Asia Dream Racing with a Stamo in seven. Kazma Daniel Kazmaiudim, still not looking right on the Yamaha Techni. He will come good sometime this year. And replacement rider Sho Nishimura from TKR BMW Racing on the BMW in P9. On row four, Pasawit Titiwararak in P10. Next to him, Jimmy Racing Team's Chun Han Yang in P11. And P12, Osama Murray for a Victor Racing Team. And in splendid isolation, Chiu Yu Jo from Sabitar ESG Team Asia. As you say, though, sharing with Evolution. And the absentee, Zach Wanzaidi, an injured absentee. He's an uh, injured absentee on the bike. He is here. And my, he'd love to be good enough to be on the bike. Yeah, such a shame because he, uh, he had found a turn of speed that put him ahead of the rest. But just before he crashed, he was looking as though it was his advantage. 
currently. It looks as though it's this rider's advantage, the number 55, Hafiz Shirin, on that gorgeous blue and red Joe Hall coloured Ducati. And he put a few accelerations in there, didn't he? That's, a, <laughs> that's one of the faster formation laps I've ever seen. Yeah, they want to get on with it. They, we don't want the rain to start. He'll be the, the last one into position, Hafiz Sharin. On pole position, right of your screen, what kind of a start on the Ducati? What kind of a start from Jib Nakarim and Aslan Shah on the left? Visors are cleared. Red lights are off and we are underway. Hafiz looks like he's off to a solid start, so does Chip Nakarin. He's just going into the way of uh, the BMW of Aslan Shah, Kamru Zaman. It's Aslan Shah who's just undertaken by Hafiz and Hafiz Sharin at the moment there for Chip Nakarin. But Hafiz Sharin gets himself into P1 and you fear that Hafiz will be able to motor away from here. Yep, it is uh, Nakarin who's uh, got the best of the rest. He's going to have an early pop to see what he can do. Lachlan Epis has made up a place. He's currently, well, he had made up a place, but look who's coming. Aslan Shah. As, yeah. He knows the danger presented by Hafiz Sharin. Aslan in P4. There is Hafiz. Looks mighty powerful on the gas and accelerates away beneath the grandstand as they come out into the first of only four left-handers. And they're back-to-back -back here. Hafiz leading the way from Chip Nakarin, Aslam. So the positions from qualification are the positions that we are in now. Yeah, there'll only be one thing on Aslan's mind, and that will be to get past Soichiro just in front of him and Nakarin because over race distance, he's most likely the rider who can challenge Hafiz, who's got a little gap there at the front. Look at the power, though, of this Ducati. The Chiro Minimamoto in P3, but the Ducati, well, was on pole, was led into the first corner, but the Ducati of Hafiz Sharin and JDT, they lead over the start-finish line. That is fearsome, fearsome for the rest of the field. Yep, Aslan chops in front of Soichiro Minimamoto. He goes, starts lap two in P3. He's got Nakarin ahead of him. Aslan Shah on a mission. There is Aslan. He's in P4 at the moment. Lachlan Epis just behind him. He's done well to stay in control. Sotiro Minamoto is there, sorry. So Aslan now into P3 ahead of Minamoto. On the Yamaha, Lachlan Epis. Well, he said he was going to go for it, but up at the front. Again, happy Sharin. And that new BMW engine is screaming to try to get close to Hafiz. Concertinering up here. So get into turn 10. Front three pulling away. Lachlan Epis holding up a Yuki Kuni. And Yuki's made a, a good comeback. Also in there is Andy Farid is the high. Expect Andy Farid. A lot of people thought Andy would go really well here this weekend. And so his seventh place in qualification, which was messed up by the rain. But even without that, he hasn't looked really on his game this weekend. Yeah, free practice. He looked good, consistent. He was, uh, his pace was good, although the conditions were variable. But uh, yeah, we really thought that it would be Andy coming through to challenge. But from a third row start, that was a big ask at the start of this race. Two experienced Malaysians, one and two, but it's Hafiz Sharon who's leading. He set a, a 133.8 on the last lap. And Aslan Sharp knows that he, he can't let Hafiz get too far clear. The difference is already over a second. Yeah, Nakarin challenging Aslan Shah. The wise thing to do, easy to say from the commentary box, is to follow Aslan for now. Lachlan Epis getting on the back of those two as well. Absolutely, Lachlan Epis has given this a, a real go. He's in P4 at the moment. He's holding off uh, Yuki Kuni on bike number 92. And then behind them, you've got Andy Farid Izdahar. 
who won last time out in uh, Boiram. This Ducati is flying. Aslam P2. Okay, we're hearing, we're hearing there's a little bit of rain. A little bit of rain out on the far side of the circuit. And it's, it's partially um, covering this circuit, isn't it? So, could that interfere with the remaining 10 laps of this race? Well, it could make things easier. Yeah. Aslan, what was the gap that time, Des? Yeah, well, he's just posted a 133.6, so he's made up three tenths. Lachlan Epis loses P4 to Yuki Kuni. Yeah, Yuki Kuni is uh, a rider here. You know his quality. He's only 21 years old. As you were saying, Des, he won his first race in the All Japan Championship in the Stock 1000 class. He needs to put himself in a podium position here just to take that extra step up. We can see on the TV screen here, some rain falling. Aslan's closing right up now on Hafiz Shirin, isn't he? Certainly is. Well, in perfect conditions, you would imagine that Hafiz is, uh, was going to race away with this, but the rain rather changes the equation. And also the power of the new BMW engine for Aslan Shah Kamrazaman. He has closed right up. It was more than a second the gap at the end of the previous lap, but you can tell just visually, it's an awful lot tighter now. Yep, just a couple of bike lengths between them there. They're coming into the, the final quarter of this. Gosh, we've already into lap number four. And Aslam, late on the brakes, Hafiz lovely line going through there. Nothing Hafiz can do, he's just got to focus on his own work. As our cameras focus on Aslan Shah, Kamra Zaman, but they go through. It's 0.2 of a second between them. And again, Aslan has posted a very, very quick time. A 133.3. Just two tenths of a second between them. We've got a race, Barry Russell. Yeah, we have. And we've never seen Aslan Shah in better condition than he is now. Physically, he's, he's got into the training habit and he's enjoying it. And look at this. And he's got the real belief all talk of retirement has gone. He believes he can take this championship. Maybe the reintroduction of Hafiz back into the Asia Road Racing Championship. That's uh, just the spur. That's the challenge Aslan Shah needs. He's already won one race. But Hafiz Sharin, he's been on the podium once. This is a, a cracking battle. It is a two-man battle because they've taken two seconds off Chip Nakarin. Yuki Kuni's got himself into P4, and Andy Farad is now up into P5 ahead of Lachlan Epis. So Andy yeah. Farad isn't going to give up too easily. Yeah, that's an interesting battle behind that front two. As we're looking at uh, Nakarin, Yuki Kuni threatening. Took two P4s first time out in Buri Ram. He's getting dropped to P5 by Andy Farid as we say that. And. Aslan Shah has uh, lost a little bit of ground. He was up to within a couple of bike lengths. Now, whether that is uh, Hafiz able to accelerate away or a slight mistake, I'm not quite sure. But look at this in P3, Chib Nakarim, closely followed by Andy Farid Izdaha. Andy Farid looking to get up into P3. There is the battle for P3, and Andy Farid is up there on the Honda ahead of Chib Nakarim. Yuki Kuni chases for SDG Hark Pro. Yeah. Hafiz pulled. Six tenths of a second on Aslan on that last lap. Some mixed conditions on the circuit, creating all kinds of challenges. I'm glancing constantly over my shoulder to see if there's rain, where there's rain, if it's been blown away, because it is gusty, it is windy. The clouds have been blown away earlier on today. And look at Andy Faridis Dihar. He's got now made his way past Nakarin Atirapuvapat. He's in P3. And let's see what he can do. We saw some really good pace from the Indonesian yesterday. Hafiz Sharin still holds a lead. Well, at the last marker, it was nearly a second. I think uh, you can see visually that it's it's not that. Behind them, Chip Nakarin is there. But when you get to the long straights, that Ducati just explodes away from the BMW. 
which is not slow. A 29.6 first sector for Hafiz Sharin. That is quick. Yeah, he's really trying to break Aslan now, isn't he? Much bigger gap. It was 0.9 of a second at the end of the previous lap. At the end of this lap, it is 0.9 of a second. Aslan is just about keeping pace with him. In fact, he just caught up one tenth of a second, two tenths of a second behind them. Andy Gilang, is Andy closing? I think he is, you know. I would expect him to close, given the pace that we saw from him yesterday. He's disadvantaged by that third row start today, but he's got the others out of the way. It is a two second uh, disadvantage that he's got, but plenty of time to go. We are just approaching halfway in this 13 lap race. Andy Farid, who started way, way down in P7, got himself up nicely up into P3. Very round, we saw Aslan pull off a similar trick, come up from way down. Probably not quite as far down as uh, Andy's had to make his way up for this time. Through turn nine. Here's the BMW of Aslan Shah. 36 points for him at the moment. But look at the, uh, the Ducati, the red and blue, the Johor colours. Followed by the green of TKKR. The yeah, the gap to, sorry Des, the gap to watch now, next time around, is going to be the gap back to Andy Farid. Well, he's posting fast times. He's just uh, posted in the first sector three tenths quicker than Aslan. Last time around, he was quickest. Seven tenths between Aslan, 2.5 down. He is closing just a bit. And he's extending his lead. Lachlan Epis, to his credit. Lachlan coming through for Evolution Racing. Bike 83. Well done, Lachlan Epis. Holding on there into P6. Yep, lapping in the mid-34s, 134s. Yuki Cooney. At one stage, got himself up into a position to challenge P3, but has just been dropped a little bit. It's not been... Uh, the best weekend for Yuki Kuni. The grandstand and the office buildings overlook this uh, right-hander. Chip Nakarin in P4. Chip third in the championship standings. Yeah, a little bit strung out at the moment. Half distance, we're over half distance. And we're waiting for a move just to see it, whether Andy Gilang can catch Aslan Shah, whether Aslan Shah can get back on terms with Hafiz Sharin, whether Yuki Kuni can come strong later in the race. And if there's a mistake from anybody, there hasn't been so far from the front three or front two. In fact, it's been near perfect from Hafiz Sharin. Flying through Andy Gilang, his gap is, well, he's made up two tenths, so he's made up a bit, but he needs to be getting closer than that. Yeah, ah. that, he needs to improve his run rate. Half is in the 133s. Andy, yeah, he made up two tenths, but that's not going to get him close. Not with five laps remaining. Brought him just a little closer to Aslan. Aslan's not even thinking about that. He's just got his eyes focused on the Ducati in front of him. TKKR racing. Eyes on the JDT bike. The blue and red. The Ducati. The yeah. bike number 55, Aslan. He's got a lot of work to do. I haven't seen any uh, any rain flags, so that might have been just a little shower. A little bit of a tease from the weather gods here in China. They've been teasing us all day. And yeah. it's been a mighty relief for those who, uh, who are leading. Utterly dominant performance by Hafiz Sharin. 
As he comes round, he had a fast sector one, 29. His last lap was a 133.3. He's just lapped in a 133.7. He's increased his lead from seven tenths to nine tenths. But Andy Farid is closing in. Fastest rider last time around was Andy Farid. He is, you can see the gap is almost even between Hafiz and Aslan and Aslan and Andy. This is P4, Chip Nacker in bike 41. Ahead of Yuki Kuni for SDG Hawk Pro Racing. Oh, look at that, Andy Farid has got right onto the tail of Aslan Sharp. So the championship leader, he might not get 25 points, but he'll certainly believe 20 is within his grasp because he's closed right in on the back of the BMW of Aslan Shah Kamru's Armin. Now Aslan is on, who's on soft tyres? Aslan's on a hard front, medium rear, and he's running mediums, front and rear. That's just personal choice for setup. I don't think it's going to be conclusive for this race. Well, the lead for the Ducati of Hafiz Sharim is growing. And Aslan will be aware of the pressure that he is under. Just having a little nibble on the inside is Andy Farid is there. In fact, Andy Farid tries to ease his way through. Has he been able to? The answer is no. But Aslan is under massive pressure on the BMW. As they come through into the corner, Aslan is now looking backwards rather than forwards. Let's look at the drive down the straight between the BMW and the Honda. And once again, uh, once again, Andy Farid, quickest out of the front front three on that last lap. Yuki Kuni threw into P4 and then out of P4. Often see that there. This is the battle for P2 that we're seeing. Tio Yu Joe has to get out of the way of Hafiz Sharin. And even more so, he needs to get out of the way of the battle behind him between Aslan and Andy because we wouldn't want that to affect the outcome of this P2 battle. Three laps to go. I think we can call it a P2 battle now. Oh, Yujo is in the way and kind of blocks Aslan. And look at that. Tio Yujo blocked off Aslan and Andy Farad has got through into P2. Not, yeah. that, Chio, not that Joe had anywhere to go. Yeah, difficult one for him. But Aslan comes back. <laughs> as you knew he would <laughs> but it is Andy that's got the better pace Des. and there you're seeing it once again Andy Farid goes through to you Joe this time is uh, Yuki Kuni oh what a battle Andy Farid and Aslan Shah Kamru Zaman we'll need to find out uh, what, whether Aslan was impeded by the back marker then but it doesn't really matter at the moment because Andy Farid is the hardest through. But it's a two-second gap between the man in P2 and the man in P1 with just two laps to go. Yeah, and uh, making his way into P5 is Yuki Kuni. That's a battle royal between these two. That's the second time that Yuki has had a go at that particular corner. The second time Chip Nakarin has been able to defend. There's a real battle going on. Ding dong for P4, a ding dong for P2, but miles out in front, two seconds clear, is Hafiz Sharin. Yeah, that battle between Aslan and Andy has uh, helped him at the front, I'm sure, because they have slowed a little bit. Last time around, Hafiz did a 134 dead. And the other two are in the mid 134s. So that's what you'd expect. You can hear some cheers in the background as Nakarin running the medium front and the soft rear. It's a great battle that Yuki Kuni is through there now. But we are going to stay on board here with Hafiz Sharin. He goes through. Aslan Shah has given up, I think, P2. Yuki Kuni at the moment ahead of Chip Nakarin. And Chip will have another little look through. We're going to have to go back to the leader just in just a moment because Hafiz Sharin is going to take this race. Battle for P4. We are now on the final lap. Hafiz Sharin goes through. 
Yeah, the front six all visible on the main straight. Vatlanipis in 10th, 10 seconds down on Hafiz. And Nakarin, as we often see, riding that bike quite loose in his efforts to get quicker, get ahead of the young Japanese rider in front of him. What a brilliant battle this is between these two. They've swapped positions four or five times. In the meantime, Andy Farad has got a, a bit of daylight between him and Aslan Shah. The front three seem just about guaranteed. There they are. One is Hafiz, two is Andy Farid, three is Aslan Shah. Yuki has got himself ahead of Nakarim. Laklan Epis is in P6. Yeah, once again, it was Andy who was the fastest rider last time around, which explains the gap that you can see on track there. Cooney just able to hold on as they come into the straight at the back but there are Johor in just their third race it looks like the JDT team are going to have a victory to celebrate bike number 55 Hafiz Sharon Abdullah comes into the final corner and this Ducati has led almost from the start Hafiz Sharon Abdullah for JDT takes the victory ahead of Andy Farid, ahead of Aslan Shah. Behind them, it is Yuki Kuni who gets the better of Chip Nacker in Lachlan Epis in P6. But that was a fabulous performance from Hafiz Sharon, and he'll deserve all the plaudits that he gets. Yeah, he will, and it shows you just how important qualifying is because Andy Farid would have taken the fight to Hafiz had he not started from the back and got himself held up in traffic early in the race. Terrific pace from the Indonesian Honda Asia Dream Racing rider to come through and finish second. Congratulations from Aslan. Johor flag gets tucked into against the tank. It's almost like they planned it. <laughs> almost. <laughs> Your winner for the first time in the red and blue of JDT Racing on the Ducati. Yeah, it was a DNF and a P2 in Bury Ram. Now it's a P1 in round two, race three of the 2024 Asia Road Racing Championship. That wasn't in the plan, Des. The flag's just flown off. Oh, and he's looking to go back. Can I get it? He's looking for Lachlan to pick it up. He's looking for somebody to pick it up. This will <laughs> delay the... Uh... <laughs> Throws the flagpole away in disgust. I'm afraid the marshals are going to have to clear that up. It's not your job, mate. You've just done your job. <laughs> Lachlan Epis deserves a massive round of applause as well. A P6 for him. Best finish for the Aussie for the Evolution Sports Group. Aslan Sharp continues to be competitive. A second podium finish. He is now on 52 points for the season. Yeah, good race from Lachlan. You can see his pace falling off a little bit at the end. And there is confirmation of the result. Your winner, Hafiz Sharin Abdullah on the Ducati. Seven tenths clear of Andy Farid Izdahar, but he finished off slowing down on the Asia Dream Racing with the Stamo. Andy Farid, that's a good performance from him. Aslan Shah Kamruzaman for TKKR BMW Racing in P3. Three seconds down. Yuki Kuni wins that battle ahead of Chip Nakarim for SDG Team Hark Pro. Chip having to be content with 11 points for P5. Lachlan Epis, double digits for the Evolution Sports Group BMW. Show Nishimura, we didn't give him much uh, time in front of the cameras, but he was a long way down, 16 seconds adrift in P7, the replacement rider for uh, Marcus Reiterberger. And Sachiro Minimamoto for Yamaha Technique Racing Team Asia in P8. Pasowitz getting the better of Kazma Daniel, who had another difficult outing, but will pick up points in P10. And then Chen Hong Yan in 11, Osama Murray in P12, and Chiu Yujo one lap down, but uh, had some time on the cameras. Be interesting to see if Aslan thought that he was impeded by the back marker in a crucial moment in his battle. But uh, Chiu Yujo finishes one lap down, 13th out of 13. So, flagless, I'm hoping. That it has been picked up and respect given to the flag. Well, everything else has gone nicely to plan, Des. Absolutely. If that's all that's gone wrong, it's not a bad day at the office. Yep, and the weather stayed dry. That was the potential 
fly in the ointment that uh, the, the rain would come. We had reports from a cameraman down at the far corners very early on in the race that there was a little bit of rain in the air, but it bypassed the arena. It bypassed the Zhuhai International Circuit. And with that, Afi Sharin was unimpeded to go on and win relatively comfortably, disturbingly comfortably for the rest of the pack. But again, Andy Farid, if he had started from the front row and not row three, it would have been a different story in my opinion, Des. So the key for the Indonesian is to get away fast tomorrow and not get himself held up as he did today. The roars tell you that the race winner is in the park for me. And a whole ruck go and try and sort him. The park firm is just a little bit around, away from the, the pit lane. So we're going to have to uh, drag the competitors out for the interviews. Really will be we'll keen to hear Aslan Shah's take on uh, what happened to him. Certainly in that battle for P2, the pace of Hafiz you always felt was going to be a little bit tough, but the battle for P2 was a, a difficult one. Zakwan with the elbows gives a, a th thumbs up once again. And I think we can go down to Daniel and Aslan Shah Kamruzaman for reaction to race number three of the season. And Aslan Shah Kamruzaman, after a brilliant podium finish for you in P3, that was quite a fight. You were trying to keep up with Hafiz, and at the end there, Andy just came through. And uh, the rain also, thankfully, didn't come until now. So how was that race for you? Uh, it was tough, difficult, because uh, I tried to keep the, the pace with Hafiz Sharin. I, uh, I think I cooked uh, my front tyre too much, because I tried to uh, close uh, on the brakes every time. So in the end, I, uh, my brakes start to fade, and the tyre start to, the front start to close. I try to maintain my pace, but in the end, Andy passed me and uh, he made some gap. Anyway, everybody is fast uh, today. I hope uh, I can uh, make a good job tomorrow. Thank you so much, Aslan. Congratulations once again. And now we'll head to P2 for the ESB 1000 Race 1. Andy Farid is here. He's letting Andy uh, make his way to the interview area that we have here. So Andy, what a ride that was from you. You left it late, you left it quite late, and in the end, a fantastic P2 finish. How was that for you? Yeah, I'm so happy because uh, this track, normally we are struggling, but uh, I think this race one, uh, we make a good step. I was a bit uh, angry in the beginning because I was, uh, yeah, it was, I was start from the seven and I was stuck in the beginning. If, if uh, I don't stuck in the beginning, I think we can get a uh, first. But uh, tomorrow we have rest too, so I will try my best tomorrow. Thank you so much, Andy. Congratulations. Good luck for tomorrow. Thank you. And now we'll head to the race winner for the first time this season, Hafiz Sharin. And Hafiz, of course, riding a wonderful race. It's a first win for JDT Racing Team as well. We're going to get Hafiz into this direction. So, Hafiz, that was a fabulous race. From start to finish, you led it. And it looked like the weather as well played a very good part here. It only started raining now, so how was this for you, for you and the JDT racing team? Ah, for us, it's not easy to, to, to manage because uh, in the last three laps, I've been uh, difficult to stop the bike. And I think you can see in the TV, the bike behavior was moving a lot and it's like I'm riding the horse. So yeah, we will see tomorrow. We try to improve a little bit more in the warm up. Because uh, if we have a, a bit better stability, we can do a good, more better than this race. But this is the first win for, for our team, JDT. And thank you for, for all the support, especially our boss, Prince of uh, Johor, Tuanku TMJ. is my boss. This is for you and uh, for Johor and also Malaysia that support me. And uh, let's see tomorrow. We try to do our best. And this is for my baby. Thank you so much, Hafiz. Congratulations once again. Thank you. 
Happy Sharim, left of your screen, now at the right of your screen. Rag number 55 on pole position, under pressure at the very, very start. Would he be beaten into the first corner? The answer was no, because he undercut, uh, undercooked um, the BMW of Aslan Shah, Kamru Zaman. And from that point, he was in control of this race. Yeah, he cleverly threaded his way through. Um, but note also that uh, Andy Fridden, that, that first section was eight after that uh, row three start. Yeah, we've just heard a reaction from Andy Farid that says he had to make his way up from a long, long way down. At the meantime, the BMW of uh, Aslan Shah Kamrazaman got in, in front just for a little while, but all that seemed to do was spark a little bit of a reaction from Hafiz, and the Ducati was performing beautifully at this stage, just uh, repeatedly lapping quicker. Although Aslan had the fastest lap time in the race, the consistency of the Ducati was there for all to see. That's it. And once again, here comes Andy Farid. He was uh, fastest rider on, uh, I don't know how many lap times around, but uh, on many times around. Fastest lap overall. Who did that go to? He went to Aslan. Aslan. He went to Aslan. Yeah. But in the meantime, Hafiz was just consistent. Sector times, very, very good. Yes, he, he got to within two tenths of a second at one stage. This is Andy Farid, is now up into P3. And then there was a battle, an interesting battle with uh, Aslan Shah. Aslan, I thought, was uh, just impeded a little bit by Tio Yujo, bag number 16 there. Or am I being unfair to, to Yujo? He probably was, but uh, it wasn't a bad impediment. And as you said at the time, Des, on the commentary, there wasn't really anywhere else for him to go. He was right on the outside of the circuit. Uh, but Andy Farid took advantage. Aslan tries to fight back, as you know Aslan will, but in the meantime, on the final lap, Hafiz Sharin comes through a debut victory, and it won't be the last for JDT Racing on the Asia Road Racing Championship. A double number one celebration. The flag, losing the flag was the only problem that they had, but look at that, JDT are right in the mix now for the lead in the overall championship standings. And the weather, surprisingly, stayed dry. And it's staying dry, but you look at the clouds, you look at the mountains in the distance, and the, the, the clouds are looking dark. There just must be a magical way around this circuit where they keep the clouds away. Yeah. From Indonesia, Andy Farid oh, that's good lighting. That is good lighting. I've been waiting for that one. That's Lansha and... and Malaysia, and Andy Farid, who really will be looking for a better start in tomorrow's race. But there is Hafiz Sharin. Yes, he's JDT used to being on the podium, but not used to being on the podium with JDT Racing. They are high-profile new entrants to the Asia Road Racing Championship. And they look like they want to be part of the deal for good. Nagaraku, the national anthem of Malaysia. Yes, very, very proud moment for JDT Racing. Ms. Gong Hongguo, FIM Asia Vice President, hands out the awards. Aslan Shah, well, you can't keep a good guy down. And the new engine, second podium, one win, a P5 and a P3. That's a, a nice season so far. Andy Farid still top, top of the standings. 
Two P2s and a P1, but for the first time, Hafiz Sharin Abdullah, first time this season anyway. He's well used to being on the podium, Hafiz Sharin. And on the Ducati for JDT Racing, a first win after a difficult time out in Boiram. Kentaro Kobayashi from Sumitomo Rubber Industries Limited, otherwise known as Dunlop. They've done a fine job. They've got the wets on standby, but they haven't needed them today. Those guys have been busy this weekend. As always, Dunlop, great support from them, great support from Indian Oil, and great support, as always, from Idimetsu. And thanks to all the sponsors on the screen behind you. But congratulations to Aslan Shark and Rizaman. Still competitive, still fit. Well done, Andy Faradizdar. Look out for him if he gets a better start tomorrow for Honda Asia Dream Racing with a Stamo. But particularly, congratulations to Hafiz Sharin Abdullah of JDT Racing. They have taken first place for the first time. This is the championship standings in the Superbikes, and Andy Farid still holds the lead, 13 points clear of Aslan Sharp. Chip Nakarin in, four, in third place on 49 points, four clear of Hafi Sharon Abdullah from JDT Racing. Yuki Kuni, he did well actually to come back. Yuki Kuni picked up 13 points, that's uh, 39 points, very consistent for the SDG Team Hark Pro Honda rider. Zach Onzaidi, an injured absentee today and tomorrow. We hope, fingers crossed, I say ironically, we hope he can get back on time for uh, the race in Japan. Lachlan Epis, top marks for the Evolution Sports BMW of Lachlan. Uh, 25 points for him, alongside Sachiro Minamoto, the 600cc champion, having a tough time stepping up on the Yamaha Techni Racing Team Asia. Yamaha. Okay, and with that, I ask Barry Russell, just give us your highlights for day one before we go into day two. First win for Giancarlo Maurizio in underbone 150s. That meant a whole lot to him after two years of trying. Uh, Cal Vietnam's first win uh, in controversial circumstances. That was controversy of the day. Uh, but my rider of the day is Azroy Hakim Anwar for coming back from such deep disappointment after round one to take the victory today brilliant performance from him and congratulations once again yeah many highlights to take from day one this is Zhuhai the rain has stayed off today we hope it stays off tomorrow but we cannot be sure this is the Idemetsu Asia FIM Asia road racing championships coming to you from Zhuhai in China join us again tomorrow same time same place we'll see you then Demitsu IFG7. Flagship engine oil nano tailor for high precision engines. Enhanced performance in seven ways with super protective septic guard technology, the accumulated wisdom of oil experts. Anti power loss nanotech keeps your engine performing at its peak for extended periods in harsh conditions. Beat the heat. Demitsu IFG7.